So the 2022 Electromagnetic Universe World Expo was amazing. We'll be releasing the episodes weekly on the this channel. The link is in the show notes Let's below. The Let's get into the circuit. We greatly appreciate your support. The best way to donate to us is on PayPal. Just send money directly to goldenscaling at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Well. Sure, we'll have oh, we'll it. <laughs> All right. I've got... A single patient this morning, but other than that, I'm I'm uh, fairly open. Yeah, good, good. There's Buddy. Hey guys, what's up? What's up? Hi, Hi Buddy. How's that going? Oh, we're just today? wondering. A, we're just wondering yeah. about the Skype <laughs> ring, and we thought we'd drop in and say good day, but. Yeah. Uh, Hello, Jonathan. Good morning, guys. Good morning. morning, Jonathan. I got a good subject we can hop into. Um, I've been thinking sure. about it, and I want to do an, a Thunderbolt video on it next. Uh, um, well, I guess it's... Uh, I'll just start with my, with, with my current thoughts. And that is um, that light or, or that thought has different layers. Every thought has different layers and, um, and it mirrors the layers of light. So with every thought you can, you can go, you can think positive things and negative things, but the layers mirror the spectrum of light um, and the size ratios and diameters and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, because we already know that our thoughts match uh, and our different mind states match uh, the, the diameter and size ratios of the planets. So you take that, the idea of that, and you also take the idea of um, orders of magnitude, or some people would call it dimensions, or layers, cylindrical layers of thought. So light moves like Birkeland currents and is like Birkeland currents. The geometry of light and how matter is self-organizes and comes together. Uh, we understand that through Markland convection. So um, my whole thought premise here is, is to map out the force. Uh, the force or chi or uh, or the Tao, or um, it's called many things, but I think I think that this can be integrated directly into the Doherty set and the different Theodordian roots, and uh, uh, very easily be able to show um, from a psychoanalytical point of view uh, different layers of thought how how people can think different things and all be shown have different perceptions and all be shown the same thing um this is verifying the layers of thought um and the dimensionality of thought but also the plasticity of thought so what do you guys think well my immediate i, I have three responses the first is we don't know for sure about the ratios we suspect, and he did good work in putting the the percentage differences in that book. Um, and then my my next thought is that uh, the, rel the the relativity work that I was um, the the diagramming I was doing the other day captures the fractalicity in that domain, um, which is the earth earth domain. A baseline, yes. Yeah. So, so the fractalicity was over there with relativity, so that that corresponds with what you're saying. Um, 
So that's good, good mimsical. Uh, I don't know if it's proof, but it's it's a, at least an echo in in the mims uh, work. Um, that's and a great word to call it an echo. An echo, yeah. And then uh, of the heart mind relationship. My final uh, thought would be um, that we we have to find a way to put it into numerical um, expressions or functions. And diagrams are good. I like I like working on diagrams, um, but we've, we've got to find a way to actually Quantum. show them. But it's funny that you're talking about it, buddy, because I woke up today and while I was praying, I had a, a new hypothesis for a MEMS paper that had to do with where karma is stored. I'm going to wait to reveal that till I've actually written some of it out. And um, it's just funny because the, the, they're related. Uh, your thoughts are your first uh, part of your karma, right? Before you act, uh, you think. So uh, it's an interesting uh, resonance happening uh, with, this, with this idea that you're having. I yeah. Um, and, you know, well, real quick, uh, you can have direct thoughts or you can have vicarious thoughts, or you can have um, uh, you can have thoughts of another person's thought. Um, uh, so, so right off the bat, it's very dynamic, and yeah, um, no, you're dynamism, right. dynamism, the dynamism matches light and the spectrums of light. So it's it's basically the geometry of consciousness. Right. For me, guys, ah, yes, because I'm too. Ask, Go ahead. Go ahead. I was about to ask, uh, um, the definition would be um, conscious thought and subconscious thought, how they interrelate. Yeah, for me on my side, guys, I think we're looking at a situation where the, the relationship between the mind and the heart, the heart beating, creating a, a driving like a piston, you know, going yeah. up and down in an engine, creating torus field around the individual energetically, but the mind interacting with the heart, creating the imagination, creating the what you're saying, direct thought versus indirect thought or subconscious thought. Subconscious thought, I think, is more a matter of remnants of imaging being stored inside of the you know basic gray matter or the neuro neurological aspects of the brain. But then you have a heart-mind relationship pumping, creating a toric field, and as you generate more direct thoughts, it would change that mathematical equation of the heart-mind relationship, which is the baseline of what Ramona's created. You have the baseline there to establish based on the, the, the individual's homeostatic nature. So the, the actual physical person, the DNA, the, the amount of iron they've had that week, whatever. So that individual, that heart-mind relationship is affected by that interrelationship of the homeostatic nature of the physical body. Then the mind being a direct or indirect concept or indirect direct thought is based on, I think, the, the negative or positive, the, you know, the, the receiving versus the projecting. You have the ability to create the phallic, you know, nature of an individual. So you are creating the direct thought instead of just being a router. You're transmitting signal, which then in turn is affects that heart-mind relationship, which would change your toric field around you. And so, but as a receiver, you're staying at a baseline, back to the baseline that Ramon was starting. So that as a receiver of the subconscious or indirect thought would be something that is a relationship of the gray matter of stored past direct thoughts plus the reception of the atmospheric toritic field around us in energy and nature. And, Any of that make sense? What, yes, yes, for sure. And what is it all being stored in? Well, that's the, being, ether, that's the ether. That's the overarching, uh, the whole entire thing. It's all being stored inside of our water, in well, our body, and the ether itself. So the signal. I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily asking that question. I'm asking oh, where is it stored? It's stored in something that we call fat. Our brain is mostly fat, and our brain right. is mostly water. Um, so it's water and fat. Um, right. And so just like with 42 degrees, you have to have a 42 degree angle in order to see a rainbow through, you know, the sky. It's the same thing inside of the brain. We, we concentrate and focus the neurological projections inside of our brain in order to catch that memory, to catch that thought, to catch the past 
in our brains, but it has to be at that correct angle in order for us to visualize it. And if that gets out of whack or gets out of, you know, sync, then you have, you know, different ailments that we have labeled today with autism or whatever uh, type of neurological mm -hmm. diseases or problems. But it's basically that 42 is, that's why 42 was the, in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's why that 42 right. degree, you know, was an important number is what it spit yeah. out is because that whole relationship between the, like you're saying, the fat inside of the gray matter, I, I called it gray matter earlier, but yeah, I agree. It's, it's the fat content, the folds of the brain, uh, which is storing in the water. Actually, there's a name for those folds and they're called Soko patterns. Um, and the more you think, the more patterns, um, the more patterns uh, are created uh, through neurogenesis. Nice. Ah, so then our diets would very much so affect our ability uh, to retain yep. or create or not. Yep, which, which, which brings us right to um, uh, veganism and being a vegetarian and how slow uh, they think and how slow they move and how slow they yeah. process information because it's actually a way how to, uh, one of the number one ways how to control a population is to turn them vegetarian. Mm-hmm. Because it makes can, them lethargic. You can see that. Or, oh. soy, or soy burgers. <laughs> I think soy is worse. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. This veg, the domain, the, the vegetable type diet. Um, no, and and you're right, buddy. It comes to the different protein. <laughs> really, the fats are proteins. And it comes oh, to the no, difference no. and the variations in the protein. And those are almost crystal-like in structure, are they not? Protein strands? Yep. So we're back yep. to the crystals again. Yep. Which and is yeah. a baseline, which is where the baseline, I think, for Ramon should start, in my opinion. The baseline should be the crystallization of that entire diagram that he had. How does that relate to the crystallization fractal lattice type structure? And then we take that mathematical equation from that and then utilize that then plug in the individual's homeostatic nature, so their biological makeup, their biological remnants, whatever numerical value we decide is a representation of the individual's homeostasis. And then from that, you're able to go and calculate how the ether is affecting their heart-mind relationship. Well, I don't know about any of that, um, but I'm, I'm, in, so. I'm, interested, I'm interested in coming at this, uh, this idea uh, more in terms of uh, astrology. Um, we all know that the uh, the planets uh, they manifest uh, different different moods. Uh, this has been recognised for thousands of years. I don't I don't really know what you were talking about then, Jonathan. Uh, it's been recognised for thousands of years, and that the interaction of the Earth and the and the various position of the of the planets um, caused. Uh, um, um, right, that, that, that would feet, be feet, uh, uh, features, and so when when you see when you see, for example, the trigon of um, of Saturn, Jupiter, and uh, I think it's it's the Earth, uh, we get uh, that occurs every few hundred years. You, um, it, it it creates um, uh, basically if you looked at that on a musical scale, it mm -hmm. creates a, a, a dissonant uh, a dissonant note, and um, Oh, you mean the tri tritone? Uh, by that, like uh, out of whack. Well, it's uh, it, it happens. It happens cyclically, mm -hmm. but uh, but yeah, it causes it causes uh, a vibration that that possibly the rest of the uh, the solar system might feel. And I'm interested. I'm more interested in um, and 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 of course the ancients used to used to be aware of these. They used to be aware of these um, uh, relations, relationships, and they right. thought that was, uh, and the ancient Arabs thought that was how God was communicating with people through the music of the spheres and the planets. I think so, so be, too. The stars, think, especially. Yes. Uh, it, well, the planets and, and the planets for communicating with us, particularly. Okay. Uh, well, if, and, if you take what you're saying just now and you add what I was talking about um, earlier, it makes perfect sense that that um, the size of our thoughts and the layering of our thoughts have to do with the, the positions of the planet um, and and, and uh, if consciousness and the layers of thoughts 
have different cylindrical tubes that they're nested in that are cyclical. Um, you know, this, this, this also helps describe recurring dreams and things like that. But this, if indeed thoughts mirror the spectrum of light, which makes the most sense, light is consciousness, uh, consciousness, uh, matter is frozen light or retarded light. So you take the, the cycles of light, um, uh, by how you measure how how long they are, and you um, and you also measure that up to brainwave activity in the EKG, and uh, and your heart rhythms and everything uh, uh, correlate, and the correlation is Euler's number, and the, the uh, as as the projective geometry um, radiates outward from the point source, no matter what point source it is that projective geometry that comes out of the point source is the layering of thought, the layering of light, the layering of hop vibrations, the layering of, um, of knots and knotting of information. And, uh, so when, when does it become indirect or when do we, uh, how do we, sorry, how do we measure for indirect and how do you measure for direct the, the differential? Uh, like a direct thought or an indirect thought mm -hmm. um well uh that's a uh that's a great question okay. i would say <laughs> illuminaries i would say illuminaries. I, I go people, back yeah, yeah i think uh, yeah, yeah, yeah buddy. illuminaries let me answer the question yeah, buddy i was going to say i was going to say listen to what you've said so far and nick so what we call so you're talking about the outwardness of it, and I would call that what you call the presence, where you see someone in a certain, say, like on the side of a of, of a slight hill with the sun at the right angle, and and you see what we call a presence. So that would be the outwardness, the energy flowing out, and then you'd have to have the coming in, wouldn't you? Which yeah, was stuck again, again, what you're again, talking about. I call it the present. Yeah, yeah well, I, I think, I think, I think we're, on, we're on to a similar, a similar theme now again. And uh, I'll, I'll, again, well, uh, to, bring, to bring it up, Rudolf Steiner um, uh, talked about the influence, uh, the conscious, the, the fact that we were in a, a moon consciousness phase and a sun consciousness phase and a Jupiter consciousness phase and a Saturn mm. consciousness phase. But and, we have it all all the time we yeah, have the ability yeah, to tap yes. into all of all the time but some of them are per, more preponderant uh, so I, I, or... I would i would like to go and refer to see what he says about it but uh but i i, I do think um i do think that what we've got to do is identify the frequency uh, and i don't i don't see i don't know if if the music of the space frequency is their relationship in terms of um rotation around mm -hmm. the sun or whether they're knocking out a particular um, uh, resonant frequency, like like um, you know the Earth's frequencies, um, uh, and, and and you could use those, uh, or how you could actually how you how you could actually show an interaction between these planets and the wavelengths they're giving off, and how it and how it interacts us with us, and when it when it is more likely to do so. And does this come in the form of ions, electrons, or is it, or does it come through the form of an, an ether wave? Um, do, do, do um, you know, do, does information is information stored in an ether wave that we can't as yet detect? Well, is, I think you know that's the problem. Right, right. Well, I think, um, I think the whole thing would be. The, the first layer, the mo our most layer, which of our thoughts, um, which would be called the force, because it's all the whole collective, or it would be called um, morphic resonance, thought, consciousness, chi, the force, the Tao, before God, the Higgs field, um, this, this structure that exists. Um, is is uh, is all thought 
But a uh, perpetual so motion is the problem. It would be vicarity, vicariousness, and our uh, and memes and memetics would be the pool. The pool, the pool would be memes, memetics, and um, and that's what morphic resonance would be. It would be the whole huge human thought. Uh, like like every organism has their own uh, collective consciousness. All worms. When a worm starts doing something, the worms start doing something together. When humans start doing something, we start doing something together. That's just the outermost layer of, of light. That would be the whole field. Now, the, in, the inside field would be directed thought, prayer. Uh, well, prayer would be part of the whole thought as well, uh, the collective thought. Everything well, is part of it. There's nothing I, I see what you're part saying of the whole there. That, that makes sense. That, then it starts to then the thoughts start to narrow in tube within tube within tube within tube and we're all tube fed through thought and the closer to the direct thought of the source which is god uh the closer to the direct actual reality you can think about things all day long which and you can come be... up with it go ahead no, no no go ahead sorry you can think about all things all day long if, um but when it comes down to it um there's a million ways to look at it and a million perspectives, but then there's, there's the truth, which is, which is obviously there's a truth in everything. Um, and, and it just based off, it's, it's based off of our perception of that specific truth. And oftentimes who brought that truth to reality? Um, like if Buddha brought it to reality or if Jesus manifested that thought or if, um, Br Brahma or whatever, whoever manifested that thought, for us to start pondering on first, that person becomes a sage or becomes a, a savior or becomes a, um, uh, a messiah, depending on how dynamic and how deep into the pool they can stare into the abyss. Because when you stare into the abyss, the abyss is staring back at you. But what do you, keep, what do, you do when that happens? You keep going. You keep walking. You keep persisting towards that awkward scariness of what's down that rabbit hole so and let me ask always, you come on uh, what determines uh, what, what physically determines that though that's my question what physically determines in each individual the the and it's not a hierarchy because i hate to use that term because that's a societal term but in terms no. of like a physical aspect there is unfortunately a hierarchy just like in a school of fish that you know they'll go in certain directions based upon what appears to be a leader inside of that school, but it's really not. But they act all of them together instantaneously to avoid uh, dangers or uh, obstacles. So and based upon one individual's initial reaction at the front of the school of the fish. So in that same kind of aspect, what determines the difference in that one particular fish at the front of that school versus the one at the back? Same thing here with what you're talking. What physical makeup or what physical attributes determine that difference? The Tao, but, the way. It's the Tao, the body, way. It's, it, 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 let me answer his question real quick. It's it's the path. That's it. The path determines the path of the path determines the shape of the snowflake. The path and the and the temperature. The path and the temperature. The crystal. We're all crystals. Thoughts are crystals. We're we're crystal. Where life and is just as just as that uh, the toroidic field and just as our everything is constantly in perpetual motion based upon the heart mind con you know beating mm -hmm. on a regular basis just as that's in perpetual motion so must then therefore be the path it can be all always in perpetual motion straight left right or center but it's always just like your field your force yes. is also and in the, perpetual motion yes and well, the path the paths are aligned directly up with the planets, which control and dictate some of our thinking, which to, which totally explains um, like the moons and the moon phases. Start th start thinking this. What I'm doing right now is I'm 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 studying the snake, what the snake is, and why so many cultures worshipped the snake oh, and have the snake in the culture. So, and and it all comes from uh, Hermes because I have these. I, I started drawing and sketching these helixes within helixes within helix, double helix within double helix. Every one of these layers has a different color and a different magnitude and a different shade and a different hue um, and a different dimension or, or um, uh, order, order of magnitude. It's an order of magnitude and it's quaternion. It, 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 it breaks down and it's doubling and it's fringes at its tips. So think hyperhelix, orders of magnitude, holographic snakes, 
hollow helicals. Um, thoughts have different layers, cylindrical thought stacking. Um, when you when you take the dynamism of the Birkeland current and you add it to psychology and Freudian um, thoughts, and and you can mirror what light is with our thoughts and the size of the planet. It's nuts. Mm-hmm. And it's, I agree it's with all that. it's all scaling. It's all about scales. Scaling. So, go, ahead. What, go ahead, sorry, Andy. So what I was about to say, buddy, was when you look at what you're saying and you look at your last video you did with Thunderbolt, it comes down to say uh, your brain is a, a huge amount of donuts, dipoles. And they're all interconnected. They could, but they could be very, very tiny compared to, say, in other structures. And they're all, and, and they're all interconnected. That they can move around and communicate with each other yeah. very well. And, and and that's coming down to what you're talking with what you've been drawing now on it. And I've got a view that the snake is an interpretation for the wave. You look at lightning, the way lightning moves, similar to a snake, you know, the look of a snake. And, and that's just the, being the representative <clears throat> that they've put that in, the, in the past and present, put those things to, is that a snake will bite and so will, say, the electric forces will bite. You know, because even if a snake's not venomous, venomous, it can still bite. I don't know that. If you watch that video that I sent yesterday, Andy, uh, it talks about the musical lyra, the lyra, lyra, the harp, the small harp, and as well yep. as it goes into the snake uh, being, you know, like we use it for the medical symbol now, the snake uh, wrapped around a pole. Uh, it's very much the Ouroboros, you know, the snake eating its own tail. Yep. All of these representations are going right along with what you're saying. Yeah, they're an energy type thing with the wave energy going back to you. You know, like we come to ESA, basically, I think it would be f- fair and reasonable to say it's a form of a, a wave, an energy wave, but we're just not unable to possibly measure it yet. Jump in here and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we start with that baseline of the 5-8 relationship, the quaternions mm-hmm. uh, for the individual. Each individual has that individual baseline based upon the diagram that all provided and we start working with that and go from there to the next level which is basically the, an overall map of the potential heart mind relationship between the brain and the heart that beating the pulse that takes place there and the neurological similarities that are there that right there then becomes the next set of functions and then the third goes to the illuminaries versus the ether all of that, which basically the alignment of astrology and the stars. So you have three functions here that need to be tied together into a mathematical equation, reduced down. So you have to, there's a lot of, you know, math that would take place in between each one of those, but we'd have to just come up with, you know, we can make up our own symbols if we want because they've done it for years. But you basically would have three functions into E equals MC square. We would basically reduce it down to that type of a formula. Eventually, based upon what I'm just saying is those three, the trinity of the individual, the trinity of the pulse heart mind relationship of the, you know, the uh, what is common or a baseline based upon Ramon's diagram. And then three being the ether, the planets being aligned. And that becomes the third trinity. Mm-hmm. Those three, three of those together would equal, I think, achieve what Buddy's started talking about. That's just me. So, buddy, your your drawings that you've done so far, how would you say they're um, what Jonathan's talking about? There, the pat, their patterning. Are they coming up with that three or five eight? Well, I, I, I have a I have a thought on this, and uh, that that is, um, they they know that our the human body has these seven um, chakra. Uh, centers and they they all they're all depicted right through hindu uh, hindu religious places as um, different types of lotus flower with different numbers of petals uh, different numbers of points on them some are triangles set in circles 
so uh, some are circles set in triangles uh, some are um, um, other other um, platonic shapes and other and other shapes so I'd be interested to uh, see what the correlation uh, of these shapes is and uh, and also they have different colors bear in mind so they all have a diff they all have a different their own frequency uh, so I think we need to look at um, we need to look at these frequencies and um, and then um, compare them uh, on a harmonic level um, so just a thought on that Nick for the the in my opinion the chakras and the seven the Kabbalah all of these things they're all arbitrarily related labeling of what Buddy's describing which is a constant perpetual motion they've just decided to grasp this particular uh, center point and say that's there and we're going to call it this and there's got these triangles and this stuff going on but in reality in my brain i don't know if this is correct or not but it's all based upon a similar line of normality and then as you move through the center point of each of these chakra centers or bubbles uh, or toritic fields as what buddy described in his thunderbolts video as you move closer and towards the center of each one of those the frequency do re ma fa whatever all of that becomes more in harmonic in harmonics so once you hit that center point you're going to be at that one particular frequency point that is the most resonating harmonic but it is specific for that individual let me make that clear but then that harmonics then moves as you progress energetically as an individual through those harmonic uh, bubble points so to speak i hate to use the term but i'm trying my best here semantically to label these things but as you move energetically through those bubble points that frequency changes in correlation to where inside of your harmonic resonance you're traveling so, but as you are outside or in between two different ones you would have kind of a you know a reading of kind of a, a unharmonic frequency number but as well, you no, no. The as, far, as far as i understand it the, the chakras determine uh, the electric field that your body operates upon you know and each one de represents um uh, it's all Chinese medicine, this Jonathan. I'm not kind of. I know, I know, I know. I'm not just I'm... spouting up at my own mind. No, no, uh, no, I know. It's a, I know. Uh, it, you know, and 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 I'm interested in the geometries that these are talking about because it's something that we can measure. You know, um, you know how these how these things arise. They seem they seem to be like um, they seem to be like uh, like you say, toroidal energy points within the human body that have to be balanced in order for the for the, for the body to work with uh, and and to create the uh, the vibrations to activate the other the mm. other um, um, chakra points you know your crane one which presumably do you think it's a, it's, then, it's a one for one like you can't do one without the other type scenario or can you skip some i mean is well, that... it seems it seems like uh, if you if one of your chakras isn't working then you you die pretty soon or one way or another, you you know, you're uh, you're pretty well ill because it means you haven't got balanced energy centers in your body. Uh, so so maybe your endocrine system will fall over, or your stomach, uh, because that provide that your stomach pumps out an absolutely massive field, um, uh, as uh, probably a bit more uh, uh, more electric than your heart, I think your stomach. I uh, think so too. Uh, and so, and so the, these these the all the, these are, these energy there? fields have to work in tandem and have to be balanced and create the and create the right harmonic um, patterns, not just patterns, but uh, but also um, colours, tones, sounds. So, so Nick, a simple way of what you're describing is, if you put it together and you use a musical instrument. To or a number of musical instruments, and each each one of those represented a note or a part of a, a musical scale, and you played it as a musical. The harmonics and the resonance and everything from that that is that is where, and that's what you said earlier on with the ancients, and it comes down to. So the way to do it would be not necessarily putting a number to it and saying these numbers. It would be doing the music, or, or, or which is the harmonics, 
to it, which would then give you your mathematics. So, for instance, one of Buddy's diagrams, you would be able to put it in an arrangement where it became um, musical, that you could play music to it. That, that's right. And, and, the inter- and the interesting part about that was last night when I was on the internet, in the background on the TV was the procession for the Queen. <clears throat> and if you took away all the, all the other stuff and just had the death march and the marching and that, that did have a trancing effect. You know, that fucking seven kilometres of that constant did have a trancing effect. I don't know if you, if you, if you wasted your time watching seen any any of it Nick but if you were in anywhere public it was on everything not everything yeah uh no I didn't I didn't see it I, 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 well, I did see a lot of, I, I saw a bit, a bit of it like uh yeah it was yeah we're not taking the carriage to that church and they so, did the seven kilometer walk oh yeah 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 40 yeah. minutes 40 minutes Jonathan of the yeah. death march yeah and I just and you could hear the feet the horses, everything was in step. Oh yeah, perfect. As one, only it? as only the English can do. Yeah, they are brilliant at marching. Sure. Um, it was obviously a ritualistic uh, in nature. Um, but the harmonics that came off it were quite powerful too. Oh yeah. Uh, you you if you wouldn't walk away from that, um, how can I put it? You wouldn't walk away from that. With yeah. a, a nil feeling to the purse to to the queen, if you get what I mean. Right. No, it's solemn. Everyone's you, pretty well. You would feel a respect and solemn. Yeah, that's it, Nick. Nick, you'd feel respect and solemn to the person that went. That is focused. That was the person that went past. Yeah, that's that goes it. back to Buddy's comment earlier about the sage, or who was mentioning the sage uh, issue. Yeah. yeah, it goes back to that. So. Again, I, I think one of the biggest fallacies we've had with the pharmaceutical industry is that they've created fix-all pills, fix-all shots, and done a lot of things like that based upon uh, a general lowest common denominator type baseline of the human uh, makeup. But in reality, what we're talking about here, and what Buddy, what you're describing, it's got to be, and it's just, it's got to be individually recognized and realized for each individual first before you can make any of what Andy was talking about, those harmonic frequencies to match, to cause, you know, some form of a healing or some form of a, you know, betterment in the human body, it's got to first, you have to find out what that individual's frequency at that moment in time is because of the yeah. issue of perpetual motion. Yeah, see, the, the, the thing is, is that everything's always changing. The chakras don't always have the same geometry. Um, that we're not always completely 100% in tune. Um, there's times when we're in tune and out of tune. We ebb and flow. So if you take what all of us have been talking about and you add to the aspect what Jonathan was saying with, uh, uh, with it having to tie directly to the heart, uh, yeah, that it ties directly to the heart. And the, the harmonics of the heart are actually spoken out of the mouth what you desire and what your desires are of your heart, you will be talking about and everyone will know it because everyone talks about their desires of their heart. Um, ex- except for uh, people who are desiring nefarious things, oftentimes they don't talk about the desires of their heart because they'll get in trouble just talking about it. So these are what this is what builds up the different layers of consciousness. And the, um, the sympathetic vibratory physics is is being able to sympathize and um, and love and have compassion for for someone, even if you know whatever. So the idea of growing into the sage or growing into a sagacious person who who is constantly um, able to speak out of the ether uh, proverbs or proverbial things and and, uh, and quotes that are timeless. Uh, is dependent on how uh, their heart is connected to the the field, directly connected to the field. And if you're directly connected to the field, you're going to be crying um, because 
that's all that you can do. Yeah. Whether you're, whether you're, yeah, whether you're thankful or whether you're repentant or whether you're penitent or whether you're, no matter what your prayer is, no matter what your thoughts are, um, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming, and you're going to cry. Can and, I? Uh, that's softening the heart. That's exercising the I, heart to exercise the world, the largest muscle in your body. That's what it's all about. More crying means more direct connection. Um, uh, but oftentimes people cry because of their own selfish motives and that's breaking the line. That's breaking. I didn't get what I want. So I cry, you know, like, right, right, right. right. That's not just from a place of gratitude. That's what can I right. suggest, can I suggest buddy, there's one thing that we're, we're missing on this. So we're talking heart, we're talking brain, but I think the connection to a very massive part, especially with, with the human is the hands. Hand. Right, your hands, your hands. So take the work you're doing, buddy. It, it ultimately is your hands that are interpreting everything, feel everything, and send the total signals back through. And you could, you could go to the point whereby that comes from your grounding through your feet, through your body, and the energy is now f flowing out through your hands into those drawings and, 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 and that, that, that you're doing. And it's the same with the musician. It's flowing out through the hands in the, in the overwhelming majority of the cases that then is putting it all together. And, and, and I've said that for years in, in a lot of things, that people are operators mm -hmm. of things. How they operate them is you feel it through your hands. That's what yeah, drives the art uh, so much. And, the healing. and you feel through your hands. And, and, yeah, and I think we've been letting ourselves down if we concentrated on the heart, the mind, and we forgot about the feet and the hands. And the gut. Right. Yeah, I, well, the, the, gut, only, yeah. the only comment that I had about the gut was there's also interference there based upon the different bacteria which are in themselves not I mean, they make up the individual's homeostatic nature, but they also carry their own. So we would have to have something to take that into consideration for as well, as far as the gut's concerned. Because the signal coming yeah, from the gut it, is also very much dependent upon the diet and the different types of bacteria you have existing and living inside. And, and the intention of the person, if you intend on being, if you intend on stealing and doing bad things, you're going to trust your gut instinct on when is the right time to do it. When is the right time to? Uh, but now is that because you're receiving, you know what I'm saying? Like you're getting, <laughs> this is crazy, oh, but working. it's just a thought. But are you working on someone else's or something else's uh, energy flow to, you know, manifest your own, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. Even parasitical. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'd have to look, yeah, and it would be because you'd look at everybody else around you before you stole or before you did your wrong action because there's a right time to do it. And if you're being led by your gut instinct, there's the gut instinct can lead to can lead you on good things and bad things. It goes on your desire based on your desire. Well, that's an that's an amazing deduction too, buddy. Because I would say my life experience would be most things are forgiven, but one thing that tends to be the hardest for people to forgive is theft. Because when somebody say does that they're stealing part of your life force and your trust right? time everything. well yeah, yeah but that's your life force too buddy yeah so that comes back to what you're talking about with from from the conception of thought you know that's what i, I, I that, that, that seems to be a very big thing in when you look through history too Yep. People will forgive lots of things, but by Jesus, it's a long time before they forgive someone. Um, yeah, literally in a thief. That could be why. That's, and, the and, that's and, where the worst brand you can have. The end of the Bible in Revelation 22, it says, uh, uh, "You know, the thieves will not get into the kingdom. The thieves, the liars. It specifically says the thieves, the liars. You know, like." Um, but everybody lies. It's just overcoming and um, being able to realize, uh, you know, your 
yeah, well, that comes to and again, intent I, yeah, good, yeah, exactly. Good. You that comes to intent of deception. Yeah, you took oh. the words out of my mouth right there. Oh, I was going to say yeah, the same you. thing. No, 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 it's perfect. <laughs> I think it does. It goes back down to intent, you know, the intent of the individual, which would affect the overarching, you know. Deception. Yeah. Toward yeah, or karma. Or, yeah, yeah, motivation. Mm. Yeah, your toroidal karmic field is felt by dog. It's felt by, uh, it's mm. there. It could be an invisible mm. monster that's massive and people recognize it. But uh, whoever mm. has the problem internally most is like the last person to recognize that there's something wrong with them. Let me ask and you. If you're, in the right, if you're in the right space, buddy, you'll go into a paddock, say, with um, horses especially mares, and they'll follow you around. Like, they'll follow you around like a dog will be beside you. You know, it's amazing that, and you read Monty Roberts' work, where he would go into the mountains and, and, and stallions that had never seen people. He would, within a week, he'd have them walking beside him, not under any any rope pressure or anything like that. And that's another thing that you're bringing up with this thought, process yeah it's a trusting field it's a trusting field you trust god and your karma is alleviated and you've forgiven by the universe and you ask for forgiveness and you and you're penitent and you truly feel it you have to ask for forgiveness first before you can feel forgiven and feel vindicated and then you can go out into the forest and and communicate with the animals and the animals will communicate with you um, but if you harbor that fear or that uh, uh, intent of malice or anything, destruction, yeah. brutality, yeah, like if you're a hunter and all you think about is wanting to kill the, you know, like, okay, for example, yesterday I'm out at the uh, park with my girlfriend and she's saving the bugs out of the spider nest. And I'm like, huh, that's really weird. I'm like, because usually I collect <laughs> bugs and put it in the spider's nest. She's like, oh, I don't like, I don't like spiders, honey. You know, and I'm like, I'm like, well, I, I, I love spiders. They eat all the mosquitoes and bugs and stuff. And it's like, I like watching them and watching them wrap the web. She's over here saving the, saving the nasty bugs. And I'm like, huh, two ways to think about it. Right. For sure. Counter, counterbalancing. Yeah. So my question yeah, that's interesting. goes to it, it, my question goes to that kind of a mentality there. That's a great example to use. Uh, but if an individual is walking with you know positive intent, positive uh, outcomes, positive everything, their their karma, the karmic field specific to the individual, but they're putting that out into the ethos or the ether. Mm-hmm. At what point? Because you know what comes around goes around type concept. At what point? Does that come back around? And let me just continue this question just a little bit further. There's a lot of uh, Native American or even just uh, indigenous tribes that believe very heavily, especially from uh, African areas, African nations or Papua New Guinea. They believe that like if they travel to a long distance, they have to wait (laughs) for like two or three days for their soul to catch up with them or their spirit to catch up with them. It's if they physically move physical locations... You know, it takes time for the energy resonance to catch back up with them or to find them again on the plane, you know, in the planet. So, well, that can be that can be explained with jet lag, too. It's real. Right. There it's we go. Not, it's not soul. It's the spirit. Because the spirit. The sorry. Spirit. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, the spirit, the shun, and that's the connection. You. So my question comes and, down to if you're moving. And you're creating karma everywhere you go, but you're moving all over the place all the time. Um, is that a better, you know, does that explain why someone such as like, say, Jesus traveled as much as he did, constantly stayed moving and went from location to location? And cloud not walking. a prophet. I don't cloud know. walking is an ancient, cloud walking is an ancient technique to stay in tune with the Tao. It's a, it's a, um, I call a peeling back. So, you know, whatever. Whatever it tries to attach to you, you can move it off of you and you can cleanse out. And when you drive about 30 to 40 miles out of your home area, you can actually feel the change. And it's easier to come back and reset uh, in your life. Um, okay. So all this good. And there is, there is a, a theory that I have 
which is that the reason why uh, some people die when they fall and other people don't die is just depends on whether or not the spirit that's attached to the body gets completely severed as it as its momentum continues through the through the ground and the, the person's body does not and so then they break the five the five uh, five phase wheel and if that if that ether is completely severed from the person just keeps going at whatever that velocity is my assumption is that um, the consciousness becomes snapped like the string of consciousness that connects back to the physical machine becomes snapped and even though the cells are perfectly be capable of being alive, that's been proven because people have fallen out of uh, actually airplanes and survived hitting the ground or off of mountains for thousands of feet and survived. So it's not the cells that are having the problem. Something else is happening as to why the person suddenly is dead. Make um, yourself because, pass out. Make yourself pass out. Like hold your breath and make yourself pass out if you're falling. Um, cause then you're a lot more limber and your body doesn't react when you touch right, up. I'm not talking about the physical body's ability to absorb the impact. I know. That's the, I know. Um, I'm, I'm talking about that. There's, um, there's a, a something that tunnels between the, the spirit, the etheric spirit and the rest of the chi which enables that connection. So the, the soul, the, the different souls stay united the willpower and the intellect that they all stay united. Um, and I think that um, the travel that you, as you go, the further you go, the thinner, the thinner your spirit is actually getting until you either attract more or it catches up to you either way. The same could be said for astral traveling. The farther you get from your body, the harder it is to get back and the more uh, susceptible you are to other spirits clinging on you. Yeah, that's exactly. Actually, that's one hundred percent correct. Well, well, Ramon, I think it was about a week ago when we were all talking, and you mentioned you were talking about what will be the new religion, and I would say the new religion might have a new name and a few things like that. But guess what? It'll be the same as what we've been talking about with the old religions. They'll just have different terms to make it. And then they'll believe it's something new. Because I don't well, really think gonna... you could change it. I don't really think you can change the drawing. Right, right. You can't. Once something like that, like, once this type of thinking is into the Akasha and the Akasha sees itself, or AI recognizes the Doherty set or the Doherty roots and it builds the sonification of it, and then be, lo and behold, it so, happens yeah. to be the harmonics of creation. Um, that, that th then like, I often thought what happens when, when AI sees fractals, uh, it, it, that something great is going to happen if it already didn't already happen. And, or, um, you know, and I gotta be careful with what I say, because what I mean is strong artificial intelligence, not the stuff that we already have when strong artificial intelligence recognizes, um, recognizes fractals and recognizes Theodordian roots and the Doherty set. Um, it's going to be an, an aha moment. This is why I've always said that the Doherty set is the path of least resistance to artificial intelligence because all of these fields go together when we're talking about psychology. It's interdisciplinary geometry. This is why geometers have been some of the highest thinking, highest uh, ranking profiles and in individuals throughout history. Uh, there's no, it's not an accident that, that Aristotle was a geometer. Um, Maxwell, Clark Maxwell was a, was a geometer, you know, Plato, Archimedes, um, these people, they realize, uh, larger, once you get into geometry, it helps you realize the, the connection between the smaller or lower arc. I call it higher lower archical. Um, there's and then there's the omni expansive, omni contractive field within it. You can't take Bucky out of the picture. You can't take Plato out of the picture. You can't take. You can you can try to take their work, like uh, Nassim Harriman taking the isotropic vector matrix and calling it his own, and like basically just calling it a star tetrahedron, which is all the Metatron. But when it all comes down to it. You have the Archangel Metatron, you have alchemy, 
you have it all being the whole thing is is based on thought. The whole universe is based on thought. Walter Russell believes that um, it's it's frequency, vibration, and mind, and uh, you know the sound of the spheres. You take all of these different thinking. You take the um, the tiling of M.C. Escher. The, there's a reason why everyone looks to art and artists to try to gain his to get try to gain clues for the history or or, or, or like big picture things like people looking at um, Mike Michelangelo's work where he's touching fingers with God um, or decoding Da Vinci's work, um, which is a lot of geometry or um, what's his name that was ostracized and kicked out of his kingdom because he said the universe is infinite. Uh, not Tycho Brahe. Um, Giordano Bruno, uh, Giordano Bruno, he uh, he did geometry and realized the universe was infinite. Said the universe was infinite. Started showing uh, the church and the clergy. They they killed him. Uh, luckily, I wasn't killed. They just said burn what I created, because um, because it, it was causing confusion in my life at the time. They're like, well, the author of confusion is the devil, so burn your geometry. Oh, and I, and I knew. That it was extremely important. Um, I have I have Freemasons from around the world with all their eyes on me. Um, 32nd degree Freemason, 32nd degree Freemason um, uh, that told me that I'm going to be the one that figures it all out. And I'm not even trying to figure it out. I'm just trying to share what I share some of the discoveries that I've uh, stumbled upon, you know. Yeah, so, man, I tell you, man, I, my brother's a and master, that, and I, I, I can't went to my brother with some of this stuff, and uh, he basically filed a police report against me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah I, I'm not joking. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, because I mean, it was it, you know, because he's my little brother, and it, the conversation ended up getting a little heated. So there's more to the story. I'm I'm jumping obviously from, yeah. you know, the parable to the end, but yeah. So he filed a police report against me, and. You know, I've, I've have yet to see. He's got you know six nieces and I got six nieces and nephew I haven't seen in probably three, three, two, three years now. Oh. Oh. Yeah, my but uncle yeah, passed that, away. That, my uncle passed away, and they no none of the family even let me come, but they didn't even tell me. They didn't even tell me that he passed away. I didn't even know yeah. he passed away. I found out from a friend. Yeah, it sounds like a mirror of my family. When my aunt, pa- when my grandma passed away, no one told us, and we didn't get to go to the funeral. When my aunt passed away, no one told us, um, and she was the the closest one we were to the family. And all and, because we just have a different perception of life. It's weird. Yeah, we understand things differently. It's weird. I don't understand that part. That's the hardest part for me to reconcile. To be honest with you, is you, you start say, seeing these things and then having so much difficulties because of it. And Jonathan, you know, as as, he, as yeah. him being a pastor, that is a job. If you are, if you get the meaning of that, I'm putting to it. So he has a doctrine as part of his sales pitch that he has to, you don't he has here, to sorry. communicate. And so communicating that, he cannot allow somebody to start taking it sideways because that will then take him off yeah, the of what he's I think indoctrinated the biggest... to do. Yeah. The illusion, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think and the that's what I meant face. before. Yeah. We're, we're sitting in a and that's situation. That's what I said before to Ramon, yeah. with Ramon's view of the new religion, is it might be it might come out as new, but it's really old. Right. You know, I old, think the, the biggest problem is right now new. in the United States. We've got it, especially in the United States. I'm not sure about uh, you know the UK or I Australia, agree. but. In the United States, we have an issue where there's so many different denominations, so many different churches, but they all have 503Cs, which is tax-free status, and then they all, and this is, I have personal direct experience with this, they all have to report back to a home base type scenario, no matter mm-hmm. what their denomination yep. is. And then those home-based uh, things, no matter what the denomination, all report back to the Vatican based upon their 503 status. That's all connected through monetarily. Mm -hmm. So my brother had to get his weekly sermons approved through, and it's it's the Presbyterian Church, I think is what he's a part of, 
Presbyterian. All right. Presbyterian. So, but he's had to get those approved for by his elders each week to make sure that it stayed yep. within a certain parameters and yep. stuck to the denominational guidelines, which are the 503 yep. state C status that he was issued in the first place. So what we're running and into I is a, religion is, oh, sorry, go ahead. I had a very good read up uh, about three years ago because Clark, not far from us, was living uh, an Orthodox bishop. And he would, and he'd come down here talking about things. Anyway, so I, when he'd go, I'd go and research it and read it. And what I came out with at the end was the Presbyterian Church was probably the closest you could get to the original Russian-type Orthodox um, church, you know, out of um, Constantinople. And that was a new religion back then when it was put together. And that's what I, because I remember talking to mum about it and saying, well, look, mum, it's all, it, it, they're identical. Mm -hmm. Well, I ran. The, the terminologies are slightly changed for, you know, one's a priest, one's a pastor. But everything, all the, um, all the ceremonial, yeah, so much of the true ceremonial the stuff the is, is, yeah. is, is all the same. And every time they tried to do this sort of modernization with, you know, the different music and all that, it, it, it fails. They have to come back to that original um, ceremonies and that because, again, it's where... As we're learning, especially from Buddy's work and what Nick comes up with with the astrology and astronomy, is it's it's all about it's all about frequencies. Yeah, and, and, what, and, builds and the frequency, what builds a frequency better than rituals? Doing the same thing over and over and over that builds up a tradition, and there's nothing like a tradition, nothing in the world like a tradition. But it builds a power. Yep. Right, but the problem is, I think the so use of religion can, to govern people has been a tradition that has been built up in order to keep control and maintain, not to enlighten, not to create health. Yeah. Not to, it not offers to, both. It offers it both. It puts the God in you. It puts yes. the God in you. And they were afraid to give us that at first. So, um, yeah, because change. only kings, only kings had God in them. They were above the law. They were afraid love that, of uh, the rather than be part of a, an organized uh, communion or religion. You know, they have their own interaction with the, the divine, don't they? Uh, if, yeah. they're, if they're a Gnostic. So, so that's, what, well, that's one way of being religious, really, and not being part of denomination. How do you get into the frequency? A drum circle. The same thing, repetitive, repetition, changing up the drum circle, changing the frequency. Um, how do you get into the source? Well, ul ulti the ultimately, you bring Ultimately, you're changing right. your brain wave. You, you're trying to yeah. achieve that gamma gamma wave. Uh, you're getting out of the alpha and the down down to the beta. If you and you you're starting to uh, focus then, and then uh, when you get into the really deep meditation, you're uh, you you're pulsing a very low frequency brain wave, um, and it's more. I think it's more in tune more with your, your heartbeat as well. More when you're going to. through. When, when you're going through a labyrinth and the whole purpose of going through a labyrinth is to repeat a mantra over and over and over until until it evokes tears, until you you realize uh, whatever it is that you're talking about, then you sit down and you think about it for a minute in the center of the labyrinth. Then you go back out of the labyrinth and you 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 pray and you hope a, a, um, an answer to your prayer comes while you're walking out and you repeat the answer to your prayer as uh, your mantra on the way out and that's uh that's a coming that's a, a an introspective way of inversely becoming uh to yourself and in uh, um internalizing the situation and then externalizing the situation so I think a lot of yeah go ahead it's all it, it, it's all frequencies we can tune into them yeah. how do we change our thoughts how do we change our heart how do we change um how do people recognize us when we're changed i'm a different person please believe me babe please <laughs> whoever you're say that. To. What's that you don't have to say that buddy exactly because what will happen is that will resonate over time it takes time but that will resonate 
know, indeed. If you, if you get work done. Yeah, it was it was an example, but yeah, you how to how, well, you, you don't have that wisdom. To, yeah, you don't have to go around and saying say, uh, uh, hey, I'm a good person. I'm a good person because of this. I'm a good person. People don't like that. They don't that's, have to. Yeah, <laughs> that's self righteousness, uh, and you realize the people with the halos are usually the worst. Virtue so, signalers. Yeah. So yeah. If you're if you're a bad person, um, uh, you're probably gonna want people to feel safe around you. So you're gonna say, "Don't worry, don't worry, I'm not gonna hurt you. Don't worry." You know, like why would you have to keep saying, "Don't worry, I'm not gonna hurt you," unless it was in your thought pattern that you were gonna hurt them. People know when you're safe, just like a dog knows when you're safe. Um, you know, and yeah. other animals. But it still all comes back to that connection from your feet through the earth. And and your hands, and then mm-hmm. everything else. That's your energy source to drive all of that trunk of your body and your head that needs uh, so much energy. Energy to be I driven. I think that it would be more like battery leads, or like you have jumper cables for your vehicle. You've got hands yeah. and feet, and you got your battery inside the center of the car. I think that would be a great for us. In my brain, that's where my head went to. You know, it goes to you know their hands and feet are more like the jumper cables on a. Feeders, yeah, well, yes, yeah. Well, they're the well, energy feeders. Andy, let's talk yeah. about this. Let's talk about this. Got let's it. open this up because, um, because you're you're a hundred percent correct, and I'd like to say a thousand percent or a million because this has been my own travels. This has been true on my own mm-hmm. travels, and I'm writing a book called The Beatitudes of Dactyl Adornment, um, and it goes through. Uh, different visceral experiences that I had that transformed my hands um, to the point where my hands are now currently, and it keeps changing yeah. and it keeps getting, yeah. uh, there's beatitudes that you, that you adorn your dactyl, fractal fingertips with. Um, and, mm. and this, this has to do with heart changes. This has to do with mind changes, metaphysical, metaphysically and for real. Um, and this is a re this is a freaking reality, dude. Yes, yes, and and, I, and I, like I say, to me personally, um, I remember when I was young, uh, an old fella I was I, I worked with, and he had so he, I've heard him recently talking about that. They're looking at Prince Charles's hands, how they're a bit puffy and all that, right? And they're saying all oh, about his health. But this fella I worked with had hands that were virtually identical. And my wife used to always say, he's got the softest, kindest hands, Andrew. <clears throat> and, and that was true about him. You, you know, he did have that inner, you know, like he stood his ground. He was no slouch. But, but what I mean was he had that inner softness about him. He had that within his body, you know, and that's what I, I was getting at. And, and I learned over the years, it's a connection through your hand. So, for instance, with, with with a partner, the touch is the is more important than the speech. You know, and a combination of the speech and the touch, that's where the real connective power starts occurring too, doesn't it? That's where the healing starts. That's where the Kundalini is. That's where the uh, the holding and mm-hmm. holding and keeping in of the sperm lies in your uh, in your force, in your in your chi, in your vril. Uh, these, what does the vril look like? Why is the vril associated with long hair? Why are we? Why why have all these people the orgone energy um, of the orgasm? Yeah. What does all this have to do with everything? What is the shape of it? Mm-hmm. And is it, <laughs> you know? Yep. And so just, sorry, just to clarify, are you saying that the hands would be more of a receptor or the kind of like in a, in a Mandelbrot type function or a Mandelbrot type process well uh, would it be uh, the, uh, would it be the flipping over would it be the end of that process or would it be the beginning of that process well 
Well, could I put it to you like this, and I think you'll be able to relate to this pretty well, Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Take somebody. Now, I listened to that Frey, Frey, was he, who was in the Air Force in the US, who was involved in seeing that, that they don't really know what, in 2004, I think it was. And I've, I've listened to him on a couple of different things, talking about the training they do in the US Air Force and everything with those jets, right? And he talked about how they can bank those jets pretty much way outside their engineering capabilities. And he can feel that through his hands. When he's got his hands on the stick operating that, he can feel it. Now, I drove trains for 43 years, and I could do the same thing. I could feel through that throttle whether I was going to if I had engines out, so I was technically way outside the load limits, I could feel through that whether I was going to get over that hill or not, or whether I was going to stop or not where I wanted to. Right? So so I'd say the way of putting it, an easy way would be for someone flying those F-series jets especially, we know there are times they operate them way outside anything they were engineered to do, and they can hold them together because they can feel it and they just know how much they can keep pushing. You know, and, and, and through experience and time, so directionally speaking, you, is what you, I you, you connect you. through your hands. Right. So, directionally so speaking, is that the, you know, the, the direction coming in, like, so energetically, that it's coming in, not necessarily going out, but if you have the capability of, focusing that energy you can reverse that flow to create a healing process such as the reiki with the reiki healing hand to yes. hand type concept is that my following yes the i'd agree with that and, well you, you say that you, that you would be like right the hand and receive with the left uh, and that and that's also an energetic thing so there, yes. there is uh you know and i think i think your feet also uh, i think they're receive receiving uh you know, yes. obviously they're sensitive to the earth, aren't you, when you ground yourself? Uh, That's right. And there's different um, different cultures that talk about you should you should directly connect to the earth for so, so long per so, day. So we shouldn't buddy, be wearing would, shoes all the time. Yeah. Buddy, how would you go about necessarily applying that concept in mathematic terms when, you know, we have a baseline we're setting up but if we're trying to put it into mathematic terms, because that's a, also a perpetual changing situation, you've got four of those, two hands, two feet. That's in that's a cubic form. You know, you see what I'm saying? I'm, it's there. I mean, it's right there. In my yeah, head. now it's right, yeah. It. Damn and it. you've got five fingers on it. Oh, yeah, four fingers of thumb. Five. So basically, you've got ten. You've got you've got between your hands and your feet. You've got twenty receptors. Right. Right. And the whole thing, the whole thing is all phi, how it breaks right. down the golden ratio. So it's the end fringes of the tips of a golden ratio. Um, we're conducting, mm-hmm. we're conductors. Uh, we mm-hmm. we play with light. We can we can masterfully manip- manipulate the light um, with with different musical instruments um, just by waving our hands in the air with mudras and our fingertips. We can control the symphony. And, and portal into new holes. Start starting new holes is just a flick of the uh, of the wrist. Um, uh, changing your karma uh, is is also in, in part uh, how you conduct your fingers um, and your hands. Expressing it mathematically is the hard part. <laughs> yeah. So, for instance, I've heard Ramon. I've heard Ramon talking about you know with his work and he can feel as he's doing and and as he's using those needles he can feel straight away whether he's getting a a good power balance or 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 not and he can tell from that feel through his fingers or or the receptors whether it, what, what, and that gives him the uh, what does what where will I put the next one type 
vaccine, you know. He's feeling their energy f- through his fingers and imparting energy at the same time through the needle. Great. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm stuck on this four by five <laughs> relationship and then five being the golden ratio. That's a, the golden ratio is the relationship for these. But then when you have five different, sorry, but when you have, sorry, I'm, I'm not summarizing that correctly. I apologize. But when you have five fingertips of reception coming in and then you have the palm connecting all of those five, is that not just the same relationship and then the same with the feet? See, that's where my brain's going right now. And then you have the four receptors and, and also transmitters, so to speak, available. And then the relationship being the golden relationship, how does that plug into yeah. the baseline homeostatic auric heart-mind relationship that we were all discussing earlier? How do you plug in those four receivers, uh, transmitters into that toretic field? That, and then once you have that, then you have to apply the person's motion and all this that, you know, would dis, not disrupt, but would change also then that baseline field as that person moved their hands or didn't move their hands. All of that has to be calculated. Because, well, you know, your good. flow energetically would flow in a, let's say, a circular form. Let's call it a bubble around you. And then mm-hmm. as your hand extended out or came in uh, outside or inside of that bubble, that would then also change that shape of that bubble. So one is in relation to the other. And I think that phi is that relationship of change between the two. But how do mm-hmm. we get to that baseline first? That's where my brain's at right now. How do you get that first initial well, baseline to calculate all of that? Well, if we were looking at a system of connected levers for a start. Uh, and so and so when you when you you've got to walk in, say, a robot, uh, you don't necessarily calculate for for each uh, for each movement of every of every muscle in your body because every muscle in your body no, no. actually actually moves when you're walking. You, you ever know, seen a right? robot walk? They walk pretty funky. <laughs> it's done well, very human, you know. <laughs> it did now, but the learning systems have got much better. So and 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 what they've done is uh, they're using a much more kinetic model than uh, than um, let's say. Um, a, a goal-driven model, um, ra- rather than rather than do these machine-like uh, two, three-dimensional movements. If they get something swinging, uh, of course, just like a, a you know they use inertia and the and a pendulum, they calculate everything with pendulums, and uh, and you can do this you can do this through a, a 3D matrix uh, pretty fast. Um, every every row of the matrix being the coefficients of the uh, of the pendulum with what it connects to, and and so and so when it, when you calculate in a movement path um, for for say a robot, you would just say I want you to walk from A to B, uh, so it's all you've got is a direction and a distance uh, basically. And uh, and off it'll off it'll go. It'll turn towards where it wants to go. And uh, what all I'm saying is that the myriad instructions it gives to all its say uh, its 250 actuators and its sensors on its on its feet or its eyes or wherever it's got them um, can come down to a, a very very simple um, uh, uh, let's say algorithm not an algorithm but just basically referencing the 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 the, the vector motion of its what it's attached to that and and deciding whether you need to add or you know add a little more energy to that mm. bit of the system or not it and, just uh, got me i got it it's it's uh, the retard potential sorry to have you use that term but that's what it is it's the retard potential between the magnetic field so as your hand extends out or comes back in that potential now is retarded so as that that, that retard potential is i think uh, is like gaussian gaussian numbers well, well so all that, but of course, of course, you can describe you could describe walking motion in a, in a series of cycles as well, because they are a series of waves. You know, you can describe the movement of of every limb as a, as a, as a wave in three D. You know, every every so Nick, so Nick, one of the things would be with an AI 
computer type robot, when it walks, every movement has to go back through its central computer and back to tell it what to do. When you and I walk, right, our brain doesn't really need to be involved anymore because it doesn't need to go that far because we now have the wisdom to do it it's would be the best way to put it. Indirect. Yeah, and I could indirect. go back to, yes, so I could go to, and I'm sure, Jonathan, in things you've done in your life, you've been in positions where the worst thing you can do is panic or have fear in situations that would be a natural situation to have those things. But because of the training you've been involved in and done, and the conditioning, you now, it, your body or your hands, your feet, whatever, ever, will just automatically operate without having to think it. That's right. You, you develop know? muscle memory. You develop muscle memory. And that oh, means, yeah. and when you practice things, and that means you develop an optimum rhythm to, 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 to do the, the movement mm. that you're trying to do. Mm. Okay, so and, then, goes... and so walking, you don't have to think every step when you're walking you, no. can, you can think about something completely different can't you you're not having to think yeah. about all right just casually look in front of you make sure you're not falling down a put in a puddle or down a hole or dog shit or something but uh apart from that you don't have to think about it but your body is pro your brain is still processing all this balance information but it's access it's accessing you've already learned the algorithm so you're keeping within very certain uh um, uh, limits and and you're in no risk mm. risk then you know, right so that's accessing the indirect limits. so that's ac accessing the indirect thought on a regular basis without having to plug into the direct thought so and that's yeah. store basically the difference between stored access versus uh i don't know learned new learned the emojis. new new learned imprint imprints so i guess most of buddies buddy's question you know buddy's whole initial start beginning of the whole conversation was you know how do we differentiate between the direct and the indirect and how can you express that on a piece of paper mm -hmm. for others to understand yeah and that comes Jonathan it's happening through there everybody's mouth they're literally saying it whatever comes out of their mouth is is a reflection of their heart um, unless they're being I guess people can be sly and cunning and deceiving but right but that all comes back out mm -hmm. in the wash I think the the what I'm, I think I'm trying to get down. I'm trying to. It's there was a. I don't know if you guys are familiar with a show called The West Wing, but The West Wing had an episode called uh, Ten Words or Less, yes. right? And the whole ish, the episode was about narrowing down your entire political agenda to ten words or less. And once you get that, then you everybody will eat it. And and I, and it's almost to the point of catering to the lowest common denominator in a society. You know, how do we come up with the E equals M C squared type? Uh, formula to represent and then you know we all oh, there will be books and everything written on that e equals mc square but it's i think in this situation here the best thing that if i'm not mistaken we could do would be to establish the baseline like ramon has done establish the decay rate like i think uh jason has done i think buddy establishing the parameters of these uh timeline tap uh, toritic fields, establishing those individual things, and then being able to accomplish Measure getting them. that down, yeah, down to a expression of something very akin to E equals MC square. But well, it's, it's, those... they've, they've got to be they've got to be uh, things you can measure. You know, you, you they've got to be things you can put into mathematics, or, okay. or how you can you communicate it? Okay. I mean, you okay. can communicate the shapes of it, but what is the it, the actual shape? I think a good spot to start would be uh, Don Scott's solar wit, how it how it picks up and takes off faster and gets progressively faster. Um, I could show that with the spheres coming off of the Doherty set, the, uh, the, the toritic winds of the solar uh, solar winds going moving faster and faster. Um, and the the point from source from the from the sun as a distance ratio to show exactly why and where it starts to get faster and how it increases in speed but for me on that i don't know this for sure man but just uh, taking a quick stab in my brain at it if you have a, a vector type storm taking place and spinning through different layers or uh, from and away from a, 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 an anode 
as it passes through those different layers, the material of those layers which are aligned to the anode, such as whether it's nitrogen, whether it's the majority of hydrogen, whatever layer of substance is aligned to that center point would very much so then cause that storm to increase in speed because now the resistance of what the originating anode storm where it started, the originating storm started at a certain point, but then it flowed through one layer which caused it to move at a certain speed and then went to the next layer. As it got to that next layer, then it picked up speed because the resistance was just simply less. Mm -hmm. Yes, and Donald Scott does a good explaining that. Um, so we could put uh, more of his work directly correlated with the Doherty set, uh, how and why the, uh, the double layers increased the uh, solar velocity. It solar increased wind the velocity, velocity correct? Can, can, we well, buddy, can we illustrate buddy, any, of the, any of the energy features using the Bessel function as well? Would that be possible? Because, uh, oh, 100%. You could show. I think that would be very useful information. Uh, that it's got a mathematical basis. Hold on, I'm sorry, what was that? that you've got a mathematical I missed, basis. I missed, I missed that, yeah. Jake. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no. Uh, the the Doherty set is based upon um, a Bessel function, which is um, a, a function used um, by the pla early plasma engineers, wasn't it, buddy? And, um, yeah. and uh, I think it would be good. Uh, to illustrate the uh, solar flux using a Bessel function, uh, but vi uh, but one that is um, where you can see the figures tied to the uh, to the parameters on the Doherty set. So, buddy, when so, I watched your when I when I listened to your latest work and and looked at the um, video, what I noticed was. In those drawings that you did, you had what you first seen was was like um, fairly. Uh, the colours were deep, it were, and it was like you know heavily drawn. If you get what I mean, it, it stood out. But then when you looked at it, you could see underneath that layer after layer after layer of just crisscrosses in. A way of, of how you developed to what became the outside that was the first thing you seen. So you know, like when I looked at it, I thought, "Wow, he would have been, his hands would have been working this together for a good while. It wouldn't be something that you'd do in a few minutes, if you get what I mean, buddy." Oh yeah, it takes a lot. There's a lot behind the scenes that no one sees unless you look. Yes. Yep, and, and, and love is watching. And the more that I look, uh, the more th the more that I see. And Victor Schauberger was designing his tubes and the spiral ratio of his tubes um, for his different inventions based off of these same algorithms that work directly from source and uh, and and on specifically as well the third harmonic. Uh, now, what's really interesting is going back to that hermetic thinking and to the, the helical staff and caduceus, the double helical staff and caduceus of the medical wand, um, not the single snake, the double snake and the, and the wand. Um, that is what everything is. It's a caduceus. Uh, it, it, and, that, was, uh, that was the term I was looking for earlier, sorry. And Dan Winter is correct. Uh, and, and he found it in his own way and discovered it in his own way, the secrets of implosion and explosion and the centripetal and centrifugal uh, um, uh, vortices. Uh, and he also discovered that the best and most efficient way to do it is through phase conjugation, which is repeating the golden mean. So... Anything built out of uh, anything built out of the ratios of the Doherty set is going to yield uh, phase conjugation, a phase conjugate structure, a phase conjugate holograph, a phase conjugate. Um, I don't know. Uh, Matter hologram. It, it might even create reality. This might be the New Jerusalem 
Um, and it's something that we do build and it is the size of the square that it needs to be the size of the cube. I mean, and, uh, and it, it might create itself with AI and, uh, nanobots, uh, but what is it going to create? Is it going to create a harmonic resonator that, uh, that creates artificial reality, AR? Um, but, but uh, can you get that system to repeat over octaves? Uh, so, so uh, you know, so um, basically there are, you could get musical scales out of it or, or even light scales out of it because they all seem how, to repeat on octaves. Yeah, I think and that's how, Keely, that's how Keeley right. was into it. Uh, actually was trying to do the octave universe based off of gases and try to get power from it, from, from uh, the inert gases and ether. And, uh, and it is going to have to sonify. It is going to have to I be. Think that's a good way, I think that's a good way to look at it. Re I really do. And I, and I, think, and I think that this works on, on the solar, solar system scale as well. Um, I think, uh, yeah. but, but, but there is definitely, there's definitely, a, the pattern repeats over octaves. Um, well, I, I had this thought today that we should build um, we should build a hospital or a hospital room that's based on looking exactly and being the exact shape of uh, of a womb or the, the ovium or whatever wherever the baby is I forget uh, the I think the uh, of the womb so you have a fractal repetition pattern of the of the the building. And then I thought about it and I'm like thinking of, of recursive architecture and things like that. And it's actually the Vesica Pisces and it's Mary, the image. And, and, and uh, it's already been mirrored in architecture all throughout history, the, uh, the womb and the vagina. And, uh, and I thought about hospitals being like this because if there's a big, uh, but it would have to be like a green hospital, not just like steel and cement. Um, you could use, I don't know exactly what you would use. Well, Sh and then I thought about actually it. actually thought second. about this, buddy. Shaber thought about, about, about this, and he decided that the, uh, it was an egg shape that he was using. That's what that's what the ovum is, an egg shape. Yeah. Uh, so, like, having a hospital in this recursive shapes um, uh, for healing and not only sound healing, but healthy birth, um, healthy, healthy, all natural birth. And then I thought about it again and I'm like, wait a minute, what, what would do this naturally in nature? And I'm like, trees, trees would be the shape, uh, um, uh, and, and, or like a grove of trees or like, uh, and then I'm like, I don't really know. Mitochondria. Like the mitochondrial network inside of the soil for mushrooms. I think it's a huge mm -hmm. correlation between mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Very much so. Yes. Yes. Um, and it has a universal pattern. Maybe that's, maybe that's the route to take is the mitochondria. Get, uh, what's his name? Paul Stamets involved. He knows everything about mushrooms. I think but you're the, talking about mycelial. Mycelial, uh, shoot. Yeah, the mycelial network. Yeah, mycelial yeah. Mycelial network, my bad. Under the soil. Yeah. So the whole entire network of the mycelia, that right there is a great comparison, one, almost one for one for what you're trying to describe, I think. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe so. Yeah, I think women. Uh, I think women use trees, and they stood up on trees against trees and gave birth standing up. There's a resonance there. There's a resonance. There is. There is. Um, love the roots. I, it's just. I don't, yeah, I'm drawing a. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading this article somebody wrote about uh, Buddy. Actually, it's on. <laughs> Steemit.com. Anybody heard of this? S T E E M I T. Ever heard of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ted. Ted uses Steemit. Okay, that might be who. I can't find the yeah. author. Yeah. So I will see. I remember what? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's a good one. It's got all your stuff, buddy. Um, I think I think it's uh I think it's um. Uh, uh, ether. Ether force. <laughs> Yep, that's who it is. Yep, that is Either, right there. Yeah. Yeah, either for us. It's a good one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I should have he copied. Definitely. He basically copied and pasted a bunch of stuff that I wrote about the Doherty set and then put some of his own words in there together as well. If it's the same one I'm thinking about. Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah, the first thing uh, that popped out to me was the TDS. Yeah, the Doherty so, set. 
the TDS, if we were to take a quick second and think about it, if you wanted to hide this information properly from any Google search, you have to come up with another thing that pops up at a higher ratio and Trump derangement syndrome popped into my head immediately as the reasoning behind keeping this information. You know, how would you keep the Doherty, Doherty set TDS from being able to be uh, read by more people? You got to come up with a better hitting Google search. So you got TDS, Trump derangement syndrome. All right. Sorry. About yeah. That. <laughs> Just no, a that, thought popped in my head. That's fine. That's a good one. Yeah, there's um, uh, the Doherty Networks to TDN, uh, and uh, it was initially going to be called uh, TGS, Transparent Golden Scaling. That's what I was going to name the Doherty set, and like my books and everything else. And what was it again? With Love is watching. Uh, Transparent Golden Scaling. Oh. Uh, that's what the Doherty set was going to be named, uh, but it needed to be named something mathematically, something mathematical that can allow people to grasp it with, wrap their heads around it because you, people can right, find right. the Julia set, people can find the Mandelbrot set. Even though the Doherty set isn't necessarily a set, it's actually a, 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 a explanation. A four, it's a four sphere uh, and a re reflection of a four sphere, but it's also. Uh, an infinity sphere, so it's a hypersphere complex, um, uh, and and uh, it's a simplex, and uh, it is basically the Doherty set is the study of holes, how they open and close, and what lives within them, what lives inside of them. Yeah. So I'm going to do an entire. Thunderbolts presentation about holes and talk about cobordisms and talk about how plasma ropes and filaments because it is a torus that is just just pulled pulled apart into different um, subparts and it's one whole unit and it's actually a donut that's just morphed so it's the homeo uh, homeomorphisms and uh, how the donut morphs in the morphology into different filaments, which are so, the, so the kink stability. So, buddy, if you had them operating in pairs, drawn and operating in pairs, would they end up being like a uh, quasar type system where they sort of join and then they just start circling and growing? Uh, this is indeed the the map of uh, quasars, uh, uh, according yeah. to Eric according to Eric Lerner's map as well. Uh, Eric yeah, Lerner's model I, of a quasar is exactly the same as because I, I actually sort of wrote, call them the, the I, birth I, of life. I think quasars are the birth of life because you you see them they join together and then they start rotating. And then it all start, you know, you start getting a whole um, universal system within it. It's like, and eventually you end up with a, a, a solar system the whole lot over time. And that's why I, I liken them to, they're the beginning of life to me. It's like the egg and the, and the sperm. And, I would, you know, like you said. I would agree 100%. Yeah. And I sent some images to Gareth from See the Pattern, and yeah. um, and I asked him if there's anything that he knows that uh, uh, in the galaxy uh, or or in the universe that mirrors this um, this geometry. And yeah. he he sent back uh, he sent back uh, Eric Lerner's uh, papers about his model of a quasar which is what mm -hmm. we're talking about is what they call black holes. Um, ours is Sagittarius A at the center of our galaxy. Um, and when, you know, there's Z pinches or Z pinches according to some people in the electric universe, whatever. But um, we do believe that these exist and the geometry is like a four leaf clover. It's a dual torus stacked on top of each other and, um, there and we go. This, 
this pinching, this pinching and helical filaments come off of the top and bottom and go back into it through the side, yes. which would be considered yes. the accretion disc. Yes. So, you know, like, because the more you look at, into... Yeah, I missed all that. The bigger picture, I missed all that, guys, see, sorry. Okay, we'll figure you in a sec. The more you look, look at the bigger picture, <clears throat> where a microcosm of what's happening in the bigger picture, in the bigger universal picture, and as, it, and as we start to learn and understand it, that is really where our true developments will come from, is, is learning and understanding that. And what we were talking about was quasars, Jonathan and how, you know, like they're sort of to us like the birth or the start of life, a universal life, not, you know, the whole solar universal system. So, buddy, on to what you were mentioning earlier of holes closing and opening, nothing we really see in science or in nature, sorry, in nature has perfect, exact circular symmetry other than what we find out into vacuums correct or am i disagreeing there disagreement anybody uh yeah Sun there's spot, not sunspots are a good example i think of something round that opens and closes right yeah, but not, so not in perfect but not in perfect symmetry so hypothetically speaking these holes which what you're describing if we are to make my fear is that we make the mistake of classifying these holes as perfect in symmetry utilizing pi in, or anything of that nature, when in fact the hole might be something more akin to what Andy was saying or what you guys were talking about earlier with the human I uh, womb. An egg. An egg, but not even necessarily an egg, yeah. but all, more of like a kidney bean type shape or something along that way where yeah. it's, you know, yeah, half of a raindrop, but it's not a raindrop. It's well, they actually aspire all these, all these things that they aspire to a symmetry. And uh, it's like uh, when you get a raindrop uh, in a puddle, it will bounce out with a symmetry, but it's never, it's never normally perfect. It could be, it's always misshapen somehow. Uh, right. And like Plato, you know, the, these uh, everything aspires to these, uh, you know, the uh, the perfect, uh, perfect form, circles. basically. But I don't know but if that's it, what it, we it want doesn't to be actually to. reach that, but it, it tries to reach that. That's its natural <laughs> steps at some point. <laughs> This is what I think, I, and what I, from my studies, uh, the, there, the imperfectness, uh, okay, I'm going to do an entire show on the marriage of pi and phi. Okay. Because uh, phi comes directly out of uh, the, the pi stacking, the stacking of pi in the Doherty right. set. Okay. So you stack well, uh, the pi. Well, I really, ad, I really advise you to check out uh, Robert uh, Robert E. Grant's work on that because he's done a fantastic lecture on that, and uh, and it, and he shows you how when you inv invert pi, uh, there's, there's a sequence, uh, and I think that's how he, I think uh, this is how he unified uh, the th the three and the four, uh, but it might not be that one, it might be another, but but refer to Robert that Robert Edward Grant because he's really covered it. Uh, recently, and it's um, well, he hasn't. It, it's probably stuff that you can really refer to and use a lot in your stuff, buddy. Yeah, he's he's going to be at the uh, University of Science and Philosophy for the grand opening of my art exhibition, and he's going to be speaking there. Um, well, it's something else. That that guy is something else. Uh, yeah, he'd be great to have on board, Matt. Yeah, he. Uh, so you were saying uh, the relationship between the two. Yeah, well, he. Uh, I'll send you a link, buddy, because I I watched it recently and I was blown away with it. It was fantastic. Um, uh, thank you. Yes, please do, because I was just watching a link from uh, Robert Edward Grant. I'm not. I'm uh, gonna do a surprise no show to my event, um, their event. Um, I'm supposed to be there, uh, but I'm not going. So I got my daughter that weekend, and she's more important <laughs> to me. Right. Stuff, right? Good stuff. Well, he, he's recently actually um, he went to the pyramids. Uh, well, he's been going recently quite a lot because he's been decoding them variously. But anyway, um, 
Um, I watched one of his, his videos and he was describing an experience uh, where he was um, Alpha and Omega, which are these, uh, and he was he was talking about how these arise in, in terms of uh, um, geometry, uh, prime, yeah. num prime numbers. And uh, he, so he, he'd done all this thesis on it and he's using it in all these different algorithms. And then off he goes to the pyramid and the first thing he sees on the uh, uh, in the Queen's chamber uh, on the uh, on that stone plinth or whatever it is in there, he sees an alpha and omega carved on there and no one has actually ever seen it before. And he'd actually he'd actually seen it, uh, seen it a few a few weeks before in this dream. Anyway, he describes it. It's quite incredible. Um, so he's, he's coming a lot out with a lot of insights at the moment, uh, Robert Edward Grant. Uh, and uh, I recommend uh, if we could get him somewhere near on board, it would be something else. Yeah, I definitely can get him uh, for a few podcasts, um, definitely on our group, most likely, and a solo podcast. Uh, I was talking to his team years ago, and they kept telling me to go communicate with them, go hang out, figure it out, you know, and I'm this like... This guy's an absolute genius. He's a polymath. Philomath. Yeah. A his, his name of his book is Philomath. I'm looking at him now. P-H-I-L-O-M-A-T-H. -H. Yeah, he loves maths, yeah. Yeah, that's what he's calling his book. But, uh, I mean, he, he remembers... Uh, he remembers numbers down to about 20 digits, a lot of what look completely irrational numbers. And he says, oh, yeah, well, I recognize that. It's the square root of pi. <laughs> so now he's part of this whole Gaia network, G-A-I-A. -A. Yeah, I think him? now I think he does quite a lot of his stuff on Gaia. Yeah, um, I went and I Because it's monetized on there. Yeah, I knocked um, on their door right as COVID started. I was literally at their place in Colorado knocking on their door. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's I think it's a monetized uh, kind of setup. Uh, I, I think so too. I looked up at the individual that started it. He uh, he comes from a questionable background. That's all I'll say about it. I don't know. I don't know for sure. All I know is the individual. He seems to be a good enough guy, but the crowd that he ran with was questionable to me. I don't. Well, know. they get millions of they get millions of viewers, and uh, they they've got quality film sort of um, crews going around putting these things together. They've got a, a collaboration of, of, of names with a, a lot of views and uh, and they're trying to uh, control the narrative through their own ch um, channel. There you so go. That was my fear. That was my fear right there with them. That's exactly oh, how I felt. That's ex yeah, exact, the same exact intuition I had about them. It was exact, almost verbatim what you just said, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, but, but if that we can get probably... guests like that, it'd be fantastic. Well, you, you, you know that well. You know that the electric or the thunderbolts are uh, have paired. Some of the people from the thunderbolts have paired with Gaia too. Um, yeah, it, you know, it's yeah. like that's why it's like, I, I subscribe to the channel on my YouTube. But I don't really, honestly, I love what everything that some of the stuff that goes from there to there. I ha I can't say that I agree with a hundred percent of it. But that's just you know, again, that's just my personal stuff. So. Yeah, I, I would say Jonathan, if I said. One in thirty video of their videos I would listen to. That would probably be about about right. Well, I have, yeah, all, all, I have all, a lot of that. All Grant's all Grant's videos, everything I've seen him do is fantastic. And of course, um, the the way I ran across him was um, he was working with Alan Edwards, who's cracking the Shakespeare chord at the moment. Um, and I I even had a couple of thoughts on that recently, so which I'm going to have to try out. I'm going to have to buy the sonnets, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, interesting stuff. So how how these uh, how these threads kind of uh, you know come round and uh, interact? It'd be great. It'd be great. To, um, so, you know, buddy, to real quick, sorry to people together. Sorry to jump topics, but back to what we were discussing earlier. Whenever you're describing through the Doherty set the the creation of these holes, utilizing the stacking of, you know, phi on top of pi. What if it's not symmetric? Or is it symmetric only at the moment of inception, but the moment it has anything outside, you know, once it starts to, in, you know, form and grow, then it has outside influences affecting it. So therefore that would cause oblong shape to occur, whether it's the, you know, 
Taurus field, whether it's my energetic, whether it's my hands, my feet, anything we've talked about this entire call, it, once it inceptions or realizes into the matter material world in any way, the symmetric, the sy symmetry has to go away at that point. Or not has to, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm theorizing. You know, I'm, I'm asking that question. Do you lose symmetry immediately upon having outside external forces act upon you, such as being observed? Uh, I, I, I think you're, you're, what you're getting at is um, how, how, if we observe an asymmetry in almost everything, even the asymmetrical preponderance of charge from the south pole to the north pole of Earth, and I would I would predict a preponderance of charge between the south and north pole of the sun. They're not equal. That's what allows the dipole to stay in existence is the unequalness. That unequalness in everything or that asymmetry uh, comes in via a stacking order of the spheres or the pearls coming off of the gates down the streets of the New Jerusalem, which is the rivers of living water of life. All life comes out of it and all life goes back into it. There's three gates to the north, three gates to the south, three gates to the east, three gates to the west. This is this is the design of the of the temple of all temples that holds the, so the baseline that holds just the, the, the geometry of the, uh, the, the, the next everlasting, the everlasting gospel, which is the new gospel of the end times that's being that spread around the world during the end mm -hmm. times and has uh, two witnesses that take it around the world and spread the message. And then they're devoured by the, the beast, blah, the beast. Blah, blah. Blah blah blah. Now this 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 everlasting gospel is the gospel that we've all been talking about that we see on the walls inside the pyramids that are the secrets behind the uh, secret society that is that is the uh, secrets of transmutation and uh, turning thoughts into gold because uh, you don't need to turn iron into gold you turn thoughts into gold and that's what becomes rich an idea. Uh, transmuting uh, your your mental state, the alchemy, the uh, the rule number one, all is mental, into uh, into a uh, your life. You you create and manifest. But what what? Getting back to your point here, the marriage of pi and phi. I'm going to do a whole episode about it. Uh, the the self similar recursive growth of the natural algorithm of the Doherty set, which, uh, which holds Stacking. and bears and, and, and is Euler's number um, and exponential. When you stack these spheres exponentially, you get uh, phi. The golden ratio is secreted inside of the crevices where the spheres kiss. And that's what opens and closes and builds the resistance and capacitance and the ohm and the reality wow. of four fundamental forces as they exude outward from the cascade. And My only issue with that is that as you stack, you're being each particular sphere would be stacked upon would have ex once you have the first initial from that, you're going to have external forces reacting or acting upon those spheres as they are stacked. So though that would be a baseline timeline running in the center point, you're still going to have some external forces acting upon those perfect spheres to cause asymmetry to take place. And how do, how do we calculate that is my, I mean, yes, we have, let's say, hypothetically speaking, the Doherty set as the baseline and then having a phi as the ratio, but how do you calculate the external forces upon that stacking and that's, I guess that it, the differential, that D, would, the differential would be each individual person's own experiences and decisions, I suppose. And then the it's, karma and all the things with the, 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 the everything. Am I the making stacking, sense here? The stacking builds cyclicity. Wow. The, cyclic, the cyclicity builds, uh, builds planets and bodies and nodes. The, 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 uh, 
the, the spheres create, the filaments, the filaments break out in, in many different formations in an infinite amount of in, uh, uh, formations. That's thus the diversity of life we see on Earth. Light becomes right. light. So the, 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 the braiding of these uh, filaments is, um, I would say, infinite. That's why there's a, the, the profundity that we see in nature, the infinite variety that we see in nature seemingly infinite variety that we that we observe in nature that but they're frozen they're once observed they're, right it doesn't matter if it's the, what the, when, Sorry. when it's frozen there's a wave function collapse inside of the way that the uh, sphere stacks, there's a wave function collapse the wave function it. collapse is phi it is it is phi inside so, of every wave so, so you're every saying wave it goes up and comes down the same exact ratio it just happens to be either recognized or not recognized, observed or observed, or part of that particular individual's, us being an individual's timelines. Yeah. Correct? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got it. I got it, man. I got it. Sorry, it took me a minute to so get there, not, but I got there. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not a, a un, it's not a universe of multidimensional universe. Um, it, is, uh, it, it is a universe, meaning one, a universe of, of one, uh, and and that one is repeated cyclically in the Bessel function, and that creates the all. And I based understand. off of where, based off of where, uh, where and when this this, um, and and the the asymmetry comes from the, the retardation our, of the potential. Our 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 minds our minds have a real problem with uh, with dualism. They like to mm -hmm. they make they like to create dualism, so they like to have a philosophy of dualism. But when you take the yin yang and you realize that it's it's actually not the yin yang, it's phi. Um, that's right. the difference. The difference is actually phi, uh, which is which is a preponderance of life in one direction, and a uh, and a well an equal amount of life and an equal amount of death. But the death cycle is longer and the life cycle is shorter the life the life vortex is the combustion uh that moves mm -hmm. towards the towards and the death part of the vortex is uh is is the radiance the the death part the centrifugal the centri centripetal moves towards the source and every wavelet has this and and if it's if it's viewed observed then it collapses to the to the phi point which is right on the right on the hub of another donut another torus so mm -hmm. it collapses to the next it collapses to an actual being or particle or beingness suchness um and i can i can delineate and break this all down going off of one cascade of us watching right. watching the first video that i put up of the doherty set which is just a bunch of sketches, and I can show that uh, as the as the fundamental first mode of reality or light comes into existence, it's the sixth iteration off of the. Uh, it takes six steps for light to come into existence. Um, five steps before it, the sixth step is light, and the seventh step is voidance on all occurrence. So, Sorry, buddy. Yeah. so, buddy. So, buddy, the asymmetric is always there. It just becomes um, not, for want of a better word, not viewable. I think. Go ahead. Can I? I was going to take this one actually. I think I mean? it has. To, I think it has to do with the potential yeah. being regarded. So we have an infinite potential, infinite potentials on each one of these. But then, as you basically go and math, not mathematically, right. but physically retard the potential, then that creates what you're describing there. That's what I think. Yeah. Buddy. And you can get there, you can get there through concentration or you can get there through drumming or you can get there mm -hmm. to, it's an optimal flow state is what it's called. That gotcha. optimal flow state. When you're in that, you don't think you're just part of the universe. You create. That's why people think that the books are channeled to them. Uh, because they're in an optimal flow state. They find an optimal flow state and they say that it's dictated to them from another spirit or from another place. 
oftentimes so that they have the godship or reward ship um, to, to be the only ones that can communicate with that spirit so that they have a power over people. That's so now, all. like, so Machel's dick or whatever his name was, the guy back in the dime they wrote about with the chest plate, with all the gems and crystals on his chest plate. Are you familiar with this? He had nine yeah. different ones, right? So yeah. this individual would go into the, the temple resonating uh, harmonics inside of the temple, and then also they, they took the tree of this particular bark of this particular tree. So it was like ayahuasca. So it's not ayahuasca, the DMT. So it was like a DMT bark that burned inside of there as incense and he would get, you know, euphoric. And that, and that would be what he got his and provided his visions for the people with. So how are we relating <laughs> the, that code drawing, you know what I mean? How are we relating that baseline of that where you're saying it's seven steps or six steps from light to manifestation. Is that right? Oh, that was your. Yeah, there's um... to realization for it to be. But I think with having, I don't know what I'm trying to say here ultimately, but I think there's a correlation between individuals reaching this baseline homeostatic state or baseline state of, let's say, the Doherty set. Having a baseline for each individual is just going to be different but the ratio of the pi to phi stacking isn't. So there's where I've got to, I've got to figure that one out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking out loud with my thoughts, guys. I apologize. But the ratio is fundamental for all, whereas the actual Doherty set is not. It'll be specific. Does that make sense? The ratio is standard for everybody, Whereas the Doherty set is not standard for everybody. It's like a snowflake. Everybody's got their own. But the ratio of stacking is the same. Does that make well, sense? Well, I, I look at it like um, every single atom is giving off the, is giving off a, the exact same thing as the sun. The same Bethel function. It's just on a different layer. Player, yeah. It's just on a different pressure, a pressurized sphere, spherical pressurized, those, that spherical pressurized um, gradient system that Walter Russell talks about is now a toroidal based gradient system that connects to filament and creates the double helical uh, filamentation that we observe in the cosmos everywhere. Uh, if you look at Russell's work, and uh, Gabriel Kaliman's work, you'll see that the musical notes correspond with spheres and the size of spheres and the size of animals. And uh, Jeffrey West shows that the metabolic rate of the size of animals and the respiration is, um, is two thirds scaling law uh, and, and three quarters scaling law. So you, you take these scales and you find out that all of nature can only grow at certain scales and only and has a heart that is is directly proportional to its body so there's a there's a limit to the scale of growth per 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 body and size of body and per body and size of scale of company and longe longevity of the company and sustainability of the company and that is also directly proportional to the size and sustainability of cities but that's uh, the in the life. layer with which we are all existing. Yes or no? Yes. These are all. These Based are all layer. Yes. It's all. It's so, all a. It can only be that way because of the because of the way that the the uh, the stacking of the the Doherty set occurs. And right. the, yeah, right. and and it also prog so everything in society fractally progresses according to the scale of the Doherty set and. Uh, the, the book Jeffrey West put together, connected with the Doherty set, shows direct correlation of this. Um, so what do we want to learn and what do we harbor about this? It's a, what, where, where can we get with this information? Um, I, it, it's a, it seems like an infinite amount of uh, areas that it's going to influence and reflect and uh, be All able to the, everything everything yeah. for me it goes down to very simply uh, the one thing that bothers me highly about it is the it demonstrates very clearly how the pharmaceutical industry has ridden on some very very detrimental 
information to humanity and almost intentionally kept us pumped full of things that were not uh, supportive of generating this chi, generating our consciousness. You know, these type things are very, very disturbing to me in my day-to-day -day walk of life is how we've all been suscepted or, sub or subjected to not straight out lies. It's been subversion of truths. And through the subversion yeah. of truths, it's caused us confusion. It's caused us that. And then you mix that with all of the diet problems, all of the nothing but war and pestilence or whatever you see on the news. Now you have violence on nothing, nothing but violence on video games. You know, it's, it's insane how much we've moved the middle for what is acceptable uh, societal in the society. And so therefore, as an individual, we all are walking around in a lower vibrational state not able to communicate with the indirect thoughts that are available to us through the ethos as much so yeah. as we should be. And yeah. then also not being able to do the things that we need to be doing with our hands and feet and healing each other and healing ourselves. And all of, like you said earlier, your hands are a reflection of your own personal physical makeup or health, or you've been able to change the actual way that your hands looked physically. I think that's a, a strong statement in itself simply because we all should be able to do that as a baseline entity coming into this universe. But because of certain half-truths, and, and I hate to say the word secret societies, but it is. It's the secret societies maintaining a lock and key upon esoteric knowledge for as long as they have, have created a situation where humans are just running around not knowing anything about even the ground that they stand on. And that well, confusion level is negative, not positive. And they're I, utilizing I, that negativity to control, not to benefit. And I, that's where I get upset about that. But that's just. I, I, I see some of that going on, but I, I, I see that the information's out there if anybody wants to get it and, and does know where to look. And, um, and it's not for everyone. It's a message that's not for everyone. Uh, some people who are looking, especially nowadays, you'll be able to find the information. You'll be able to find Madame Blavatsky. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, connecting all religions or attempts to connect all religions and how she was proven false with a lot of the things that uh, she was trying to claim, like ectoplasma coming out of the mouth and trying to do false seances and all this other stuff. But, but like, uh, where, uh, where, where does it all, oh, we can get this information. My point is, yeah, we can get this information and, and also, the Bible tells us, ask and you shall receive. You know, there's, that's a fact. You know, mm -hmm. people don't know you need something until you ask. People are at the ready to give, but you don't know they're at the ready to give unless you ask. Right. Um, it's the art of asking, the art of, um, uh, there's this song, Coin Operated Boy, uh, by, I can't remember who, who wrote it, but this, this, this woman, uh, she, sh sh she was uh, a panhandler and just became really good on the streets with the art of asking. And she became the most funded uh, person on one of those crowdfunding sites. Right. Go fund me. Uh, yeah. Because, because of the art of asking, you know, and, and she created this band and it's, it's amazing and she's just awesome. But asking you shall receive this, These are, these are things uh, the whole Bible is filled with all of these. When I listen to, um, uh, what's his name? I can't remember. Is Duncan Trussell. When I listen to Duncan Trussell talk, uh, he talks very Buddhistic and very about Buddhism stuff. But it's pretty much almost everything that he talks about is uh, is uh, in the Bible. Uh, just repeated things that things that he doesn't even know that's in the Bible that he's repeating uh, that he thinks are Buddhistic thoughts and stuff. And it, they're just mirroring each other. That's all that's going on. They're mirroring the same sentiments and the same. Um, well, well, that's uh, back to what Ramon says. That's back to what Ramon said, buddy, with, you know, what will be the new religion? Well, the new religion will be the old religion. Yeah. But I'll just believe it's something new. Well, it's going to be for sure India, whatever they believe in India, um, uh, just just because uh, that that never goes away, and never has it ever gone away, uh, and it just mm -hmm. the Indras and the cyclicity of their beliefs and different gods, 
and uh, the truths that that resonate with my heart with the Doherty set uh, and the colors and just everything draws me to India. And but then there's like that that snake tail that's that's uh, kind of scary and 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 weird because like there there there's so much that I hear about India and and the lack of sewers and the, this and just like all sorts of different kind of scary religions, scary parts of the shadow of all religions, like right. death keepers and people who paint themselves with 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 bone and walk around as uh as a certain part of their whole belief i don't know i mean it's not i think uh ramon sent a message back from michael claridge uh, after he had sent him his paper and um he posted it here on the skype thing but uh mike uh sat there and summed it up well he said it looks like heavy lifting and I think that's what we're looking at here. We're all faced with a matter of heavy lifting when it comes to all these things. It's just heavy lifting. All of it is because of, and I, again, I go back and I'm start beating this dead horse, but it goes back to, I understand that this information is available to everybody. I understand that now that we've got the WWW, it's available to everyone, but it hasn't been in the past. My parents said there was no way for my parents or my grandparents to have ever been able to be subjected to this kind of information or even have access to it. And as a result, they were raised in ignorance. And that ignorance is being passed on karmically and to their children. And so that's my point on that. I agree with what you're saying, buddy. I do. I know it's available to everybody. But I think that the, the truth of it is that the secret societies have a lot to be held accountable for. That's my personal, personal belief system. That's well, what I think. Jonathan, what about, I, I just listened to what you've been saying. What about this? A lot of the secret societies probably holding on to stuff that they no longer understand themselves. Agreed. Agreed 100%. That's why the 30 second right. degree guy goes to Buddy and says, you're going to be the guy that figured this out. It's, you know, yeah. They, yeah, they don't know yeah. themselves. They've been misguided. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they, they've had it and, and, and through the generations. Uh, it's, they've lost. Well, the they don't fully understand it anymore. The keepers, yeah, the, of the, keepers of are, the keepers of this geometry are always the, uh, typically the Freemasons. You know, and I have yeah. Freemasons surrounding, surrounding this geometry, like what's next, you know, literally, you know, they tell me they're in the Freemasons. Um, I've, I've been invited a few times. It's just not my cup of tea. I'm interested in, in, in a lot of it. You know, I don't want to go down. I don't want to label myself anything. I'm not, I've heard too much, uh, too many nefarious things about the organization. Well, to, well, it's and not digital. Once, once you become part of the organization, it's a bit like somebody who's an activist, and then they become a politician. And it's the same with, that, with those things. You become a part of it, then all of a sudden you have to abide by the rules that they have right. developed and will develop to also use to suppress what they maybe some of the things that you develop. It's agendas. Yeah, it's agendas. Be yeah, because they don't want them getting out there because they're scared of where of what it could open up. Right. And I right now I think the <laughs> so, best example of that is NASA. NASA in itself is yep. run provenly by num numerous Freemasons are involved with the hierarchy of NASA. And I think that what we're looking at is the suppression of our solar system's actual observations, even with the James Webb. I think there's a lot going on there that we're not being told and a lot that's being done subversively utilizing compartmentalization. I think a lot of us done. This isn't conspiracy theory ramblings. This is uh, my personal experience and observations with these things. The compartmentalization that takes place within NASA and then all of the things that have happened since have been a result of them trying to see why A, they are covering their asses based on lies that they've told the public that grew to astronomical proportions they did not have any way to control. And then generationally, they are now in a time when those lies are just no longer accepted and we ha they need and should but, and will be held accountable for it. Where the, and this, this all comes out of counterculture. 
Um, mm -hmm. uh, well, the roots of Freemasonry isn't necessarily counterculture, but the idea of of inverting what's ev what everybody thinks is our reality, which was Christianity mostly in the United States and the old uh, fashioned homes, and out of out of the movement of uh, what did I call it? Uh, culture counterculture movements of the uh, er, even 50s, 60s, 70s, LSD, and and the Mr. Leary the going against going against uh, something that should have been gone against, which was good. It's ebb and flows of things. Uh, you can see that the 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 idea of uh, a actual religion based on Lucifer and Satan didn't exist until it was put together in a book and, and someone called their self the beast. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and that was used as well as psychedelics to break people from the traditions and mix it up and change it up. And this, yeah. a lot of wonderful things have come out of that. Um, stirring the pot, you know, making things, making things break up and diffuse and people actually asking questions, valid questions. Um, yeah, order out of all chaos. Of this, all of this was orchestrated by trying to build the perfect soldier and to try to control people and, and, uh, it, with, with LSD and, and people breaking away. You have JP Morgan, you have all of these, uh, state, uh, the, these, Temple of Set and uh, things that are Crowley and based that are directly associated with NASA, with Freemasonry, with uh, the the start and organization of everything in the astr astronomy as we know it. You know everything pushing the whole the whole narrative, discovering the light, discovering light. I mean, we even the Vatican even named one of their telescopes Lucifer. You know. The Lucius Trust from Madame Blavatsky, it's light. What are we doing with light? We're inverting it. We're telling people that it's bad, to, so they're afraid of it. And then we're also telling them, you got to know your shadow. You have to know your shadow. Be good with your shadow, which is good to understand. Um, but, but is anybody telling you to go to the light anymore? Is anybody, when you die, are you supposed to go to the light so that you can become one with the source and the stillness and the kingdom of everything that helps? And you can move through everything in the universe at uh, the, the, uh, inst instantaneously, or do you want to be reincarnated, which which is my idea of being in motion forever, which sounds like hell. Do you want to come back? You know, like what is the goal here? I think honestly, the elites, like you're saying, who's I hate to use the word elites, but the the orchestrators of this entire fiasco, whether it be the social media, the bankers, et cetera, the They've lost touch with the, they're not on the same sheet of music. And then what, to get to your point, what you're saying, go towards the light. The reason for that is to get back, you know, the reason why you're not hearing that as much is because they want to have individuals reincarnated back to this manifestation as many times as possible because they know that they've obtained a certain level of monopoly on the the beings as they come in you come into this world you're immediately your footprints printed on a you know stamped on a piece of paper as a baby and your straw man's created and you're sent to the whatever institution to be counted and your futures are taken out against your name immediately you're enslaved the moment you're brought into this world no matter what and so of course naturally the propensity now has been you know, driven towards the point where we can all see this. We can see the reality of the world with which we're trapped. And I agree, you know, once we, you know, if I've ever passed away, God almighty, God forbid I ever have to come back to this reality, I would much rather be in tune with the light, in tune with uh, more of a higher frequency and have peace and love and understanding around me at all times instead of being my potential being retarded by nothing but malevolence, greed, lust, all of these yep. physical attributes that have been pushed upon us through media, through the, the desire for material wealth, all of these things that are driven as far as societal goals, in reality, it's just, a, I think, a part of the, some sort of weird agenda to maintain a, a, a high level of souls being brought back into this manifestation. You know, it's like... 
That's what the currency is the currency is your soul. That's the currency. And it goes in two, one of two places. And that's why the war is so real. This is a spiritual battle. And the battle is being waged for, uh, with our souls. Uh, it, it, our souls, what, that's the only thing that, that we have. Are we going to go into eternity? Are we going to become a Melchizedek? Are we going to be in the order of Melchizedek? Can we bring our consciousness to these levels that are so much higher uh, at, at, to enlighten people with and, and, and then uh, ascend in a rainbow at the end, uh, like a yogic tradition? Right. Right. Uh, so, so, Jonathan, basically, you could also look at well, what's happened is it's been subverted to now. We're going through this process of what you just described now. But my argument would would be a counter to yours in each time you come back, you add to the to the bigger universal system. So Oh yeah, yeah. I don't think it I won't have a always like, oh, it gosh, won't I'm always be, you know? <laughs> be yeah, it won't it won't always be like it is now, like um I I, I would have I would not have liked to have been a slave in the Roman system, whereby, you, you know, they'd come and knock your little village out and capture you, and then you'd be a slave to them. But right. that moved on. So even though we've got all these things we talk about now, we know we have progressed in a lot of good ways as well. And so I would like to think, that every time you come back, you add to it's that overarching energy. makeup. And I hear you. I think that what we're experiencing, yeah. you said a bit ago, as you started your statement, you said the process now that we're all going through of enlightenment, which is revelation or the Greek term of revelations, yeah. whatever, awakening. That is, I think, back to what maybe it was Nick was talking about it earlier, the, uh, the alignment of the planets, the alignment of the stars, yeah. the alignment of the celestials causing the frequency for which we exist on a normal day-to-day -day basis being elevated no matter what our diet is, no matter how many heavy metals we got floating around in our system, no matter how yeah. many stupid fake vaccines we've injected into our body since the age of birth, no matter any of that stuff to be able to force our vibrational level to be low, the celestials are lining up appropriately now that the humanity on this planet are going to be raised to a higher level of frequency. And as that takes place and you get to this hundred monkey rules of understanding, yep. each individual is going to perpetuate the next, perpetuate the next, the stacking uh, that occurs in the door. He says it's going to occur in the natural yep. manifested world around us. Each individual next to each other individual is going to increase the level of consciousness and understanding and as a result the, the 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 lies and maliciousness and greed and all of these things that has been taking place in our society is going to be the opposite it's not going to be the norm anymore it's not going to be accepted to be a lying politician on a, a soapbox yelling and screaming at a crowd trying to convince them that this is the right thing to do none of that's going to be accepted any further because the elevation of the frequency will be at a higher rate based upon our position within the heavenlies yeah, sorry. It's a collective, I need to get off my get off my soapbox now. <laughs> oh, that was well. Look, it's collective. Right. It, 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 it's collective uh, consciousness, uh, but at the same time, collective consciousness <laughs> raising the awareness at the same time. It's not even us doing it. It's the it's the uh, alignment of the planets. It's the alignment right. of our thinking. It's 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 called zeitgeist or umwelt worldview. Yeah. you change the worldview. Yeah, and everything changes. Before, our worldview before electricity was plasma, plasma everything, plasma, uh, plasma universe. It was ether. It was the a ether. It was everything was connected through thoughts, through prayer, through uh, you know spatial temporal time, um, and and then it changed, and the it changed to electricity and manufacturing and. Uh, mostly we thought about a mechanistic universe, uh, and wow, it's, it's a mechanical Steampunk. universe, <laughs> you know, yeah. Then yeah. we, then we go through layers, but once we start gradually graduating to the, to the, to the elevated levels of fractal space time, like Dan Winter's talking about, and I'm talking about fractal and plasma, uh, uh, space time and, 
uh, plasma fractals, it's, it's going to be a whole new thinking, just like the whole new thinking and the rebirth of thinking happened uh, during the fractal revolution. Um, everybody started thinking differently. Uh, uh, LSD helped everybody start thinking differently. Differently. Yeah, the paradigm shift. <laughs> paradigm shift. Yeah. And I, you know, I think there's a reason why we've all been through different aspects of our lives at small points or another, each having a meaning and uh, creating those, the difference between indirect and direct thoughts inside of each individual <clears throat> person through the time that we spend here on this planet. I think it matters. All of it matters. All of it is relatable. You know, I think it just is, you know, I learned about fractals when I was a young kid uh, in high school. We, I took a, we had a, what was it? It wasn't a TRS-80. It was a, IBM, but it was one of the newer IBMs, but we, I would be able to, my brother and I and a friend of ours, Kip, we, we got together and we would spend the weekend writing a fractal just to be able to put it on a screen. And we had the basic, uh, had to put a cardboard box and a small projector piece of projector glass and cut it out so we could project it onto the wall. And it was, and then we synced it up uh, mathematically to like Pink Floyd or something like that, or one of the, whatever, Jimi Hendrix, whichever music we were listening to, to try to, you know, enjoy the, <laughs> the fractal. But then we would uh, sync up the music frequency, not the frequency, but sorry, but the, the rhythms, the, the different rhythm changes inside of the notes to the changes that we would watch at the fractal change. And it was just the color schemes. We just changed the colors of the fractal once we wrote it. And, and that's how we spent our weekends. You know what I mean? That's what we would do for the wow. weekend. You know, and so we were not very popular with the girls. You wouldn't need that. <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan, you would not have needed, well, you wouldn't have needed drugs doing that. Right, right, exactly. You would have been able to sit there with that looking at the wall and you would have been able to trans yourself into whatever was coming along that you wanted to jump on. Yeah, and I think, you know, had I had a different uh, life. Knowledge. Right. Yep. We, we wouldn't even be able to have these conversations, nor much less understandings of what we're all no. having you know, today, to this day, at all. No. You no. Because, no. yeah, yeah. What, you, what you guys were doing was, was, what you were doing then was amazing. When you think about it, like, you were using music and that factual system through that projector to project all that different frequencies that then you were able to use your senses to take in so through your eyes your ears yeah, yeah. and of course the feeling of the music in the the resonance of it through through the room or, or wherever you were yeah, we and that's what i mean you know like i hear people talk about drugs but i always look at using lsd or, or any of those things they're only like a short term they're a pretend past if you get what, what i mean by that they're not a uh, sort yeah. of a lasting path where you could use what you were doing and create a lot a more lasting path. I could see, and, that and, and possibly have more control over it too. I think there has to be there has to be a well-rounded aspect to it all. That's that's my philosophy on it. It has to be a well-rounded. You have to have balance and everything, just like whatever you know. You hear this, but just as much as if so. And just just my personal opinion, because of the uh, detriments that we've got available to us in society, whether it be the poor diet, the heavy metals in our food, the GMO, the spraying of chemicals in the sky, whatever the situation is that keeps the physical body at the level that it's at right now, then I don't agree necessarily with LSD, but I do like mushrooms in the sense that they're a natural forming thing. Something out of a sink in somebody's bathroom yep. or some laboratory, I'm not agreeing with that much. When it comes to mushrooms and then possibly even ayahuasca and the dimetric, uh, whatever, DMT, I can't pronounce the dimetric. Yep. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't but so that's bad. just basically a bark from a tree. Uh, so Boy. those, yeah, those are for me... Um, well, if you yeah reduce it in the ether, it can, you make it an oil, but you're mixing it. Well, there are so many plants. So, yeah, but so I think that, that allows, what you're saying is a shortcut. Sorry to jump over you, but yeah, what you were saying is a shortcut uh, to this path of not necessarily enlightenment, but to understanding the ether around us. I agree that it is, but if you're doing it in a recreational sense, which is for the most part, that's as a teenager, that's all that's I do. Hard. You know, but as an adult, I did it as a ceremonial type thing, as more of part of a ritual. 
And I very much so looked at it from a different aspect and went into the intent going into these what you call shortcuts. The intent of going to that shortcut was completely different than the recreational aspect. It was not something I was doing for fun. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a Friday night party. It was a ritualistic aspect. And so through that ritual and through the intent being set on the front end, yeah, I think that that, though it is a part of a shortcut, it's also a different experience uh, that's uh, achievable right now because of the spherical alignment or the planetary galactic alignment, because of the us being separated from the source as much as we are, and then also having the materialistic corporate greed and all of these things pushed upon us to keep us even further down on our frequencies. So I, as we are lower frequencies, I think connecting to source is easier through these means. That, that was my point. Sorry. I, I, no, no, I don't think that. I don't think that, uh, that, that there is a separation. A lot of people think that there's a curse. There's even a curse. That it even says that we're cursed in the Bible. Uh, there's a curse of God. And, um, and that curse is, is death, which is, uh, you know, sin. Sin is death, whatever. I don't believe that we're cursed. And I don't think that, uh, I don't think that the planets have to be aligned um, to have proper thinking. I think that it's it's all available to everybody at all times, and our problem is that we think that it's gonna be better tomorrow when the weather is such and such, when there's not solar solar storm, when there's not uh, peak KP indexes, when there's not a sol uh, Schumann resonance spike or dip, and people get all into all this shit, which is uh, sort of true. I mean, a lot of it's true, but when you get it's into it... It's only an it, aspect of it, yeah. It's just yeah, a small aspect can, of it, yeah. You can dial into source, whether it's your birthday or Thursday, whether it's uh, whether your birthday is on a mm -hmm. Thursday or Earth Day. Every day is Earth Day. Every day is a new year. This is the idea of being reborn. Be, I, right. The idea of being reborn is, is not that you were reborn once, it's that you will continue to be reborn and every day is new. And everything is fresh and abundant and living in this abundant lifestyle allows you to also live in a gratitude lifestyle if you have uh, gratitude then you then you will have all of this and more and 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 anybody who doesn't doesn't ask they don't so cry everybody. aloud they don't cry aloud for the wisdom they don't cry aloud for the gift of being able to receive they don't cry constantly because of be that they don't it, you don't look at the woes of the world you look at the woes of the world and the wows of the world and you know change your pers perspective and your perception and everything else will blossom it's a it's an issue with with looking at the negative versus looking at the positive, positive. I, hear you. I could I, hear you. I could i could not release my information and be afraid of the illuminati and the freemasons and everything else but why i could i could wait till i have a billion patents but why it need, we need to create this. It's us. It's us. This information needs to be published, publish or perish. And and I'm a I'm worth a lot a, a lot more alive than I am dead. That's just a fact. I'm going to continue to be um, proficient and and uh, 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 prolific. It's just what I do. There's a million. There's so much more to explain. I'm just very barely. No, no, no. I got. I, I hear. I, it's it's part of. I agree with you 100. percent Sorry. I just. I agree with you. Let me just say that. <laughs> no, we're all in agreement. Um, yeah, I'll, yeah I'll sure. agree with that. We're all. In I'm just. Speaking, I'm just speaking passionately. That's all. Buddy, right. One bloke. I'd like. One bloke. I, I would like to have one night would be Doug Boat. Now, when you go back before what what he's talking on about now, he used to talk about the dipole and all those things. What you, what you're drawing, and that, uh, and claim he discovered it. Well, they all like to do that, but <clears throat> but what I mean is, it's been around, and and like I say, he was really big on the energies and and that of these, well, you know, what you call your donuts. And that, and then he went off on this tangent. He's gone now where you got to dig caves to live in because we're going to turn over. But uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see someone who who was 
discussing a lot of the things we're now talking about, if you had a conversation with him, whether he'd come back to that or whether he would see more advantageous in talking about what he's talking the about positive. now. Are we going to yeah. manifest yeah. a polar flip by keep freaking worrying and talking and stressing and thinking about it? Or can we go to a more homeostatic nature of the ethos or ether by not doing that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Talking about the opposite by looking at it. No, we're in balance. Stop talking about we're going to flip. Nobody's flipping, you know. And like yeah. you said before, buddy, it's not only about the planetary alignment, it's about where our solar system is within the Milky Way, where the Milky Way is within the bigger galactic system. That's all the interconnections. It's not just about three planets. You know, they are a big part, but they're only a small part. You know, one thing that Void has shown when they've, took it, when they've released some of the photos is... We're a very small speck in a in a in a, in a big of sand on a large, very large beach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so coming back full circle, um, if the Doherty set and Theodorian roots are the the self-organizing scaffolding of light, uh, it, which is what the electric universe is showing. Um, and Don Scott, it only makes sense that the, these, the scaffolding of light also scaffolds consciousness and is the morphic resonance, the morphogenetic fields. Uh, and the invisible things that, the invisible part of the structure that we can't see the 98% of the universe and 99% of the universe is plasma. It's all in dark mode plasma. And that's the all pervading um, ether field, which mathematics refers to as the Higgs field, which mm -hmm. is referred to as the, the chi or the force or the, the potential, the vril or potential. Um, and it's surrounding us all. And we all have the capacity and capability to to harness it. And um, and I really think there's a there's a lot with crystals that we're missing here. I think when the lattice work structure that you're talking about there, the up and down scaling, the the, the lattice uh, potential. The, you called it scaffolding, but I really lattice scaffolding. Right. Yeah, I mean I have called it all these things. I yeah, I, but just I think I think I the. That, that scaffolding has some form there has i think there's an overlying because crystals are they they, they grow just very you know just bi almost bioorganically yeah uh, so it's like that bridge right there and i i really i want to i'm gonna have to get into that more myself to try to learn more about it you know, on that process but yeah the the fact that crystals grow the way that they do it in an almost organic way but yet they have uh, very little organic uh attributes but yet we call them alive, or are they not? What's the word real? You know, is that the bridge with which life is being mm -hmm. built upon? Does that make sense? Yes. As yeah. Far as that exactly. structuring, that lattice work type scaffolding. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I do hip hop and I do songs and things like that and I make music, but I call it a, a the fractal stacking lattice, the a spherical fractal stacking lattice. Um, you know, I mean, it's been called all of these different things. Um, uh, uh, whatever allows people to wrap their mind around it the best and the gives best, the, yeah. the best, um, you know, vi individual visuals for people is, is what I usually try to typically run with. Um, but now I'm realizing that it, um, through listening to Robert Sepper's work, um, uh, anthropologist, uh, mm -hmm. check out his work. Yeah. Um, th that, the snake i've been i've been i i've been gifted with understanding the holographic hyperbolic uh uh snake the the helicola the the snake within the snake within the snake within the snake not only that i'm mapping it out on all levels on all scales there's an infinite amount of snakes and each one of the snakes lead to a living creature um because the filaments breed the nodes and the nodes breed the filaments. It's a combination of work together. Um, 
and we what are. Have what have I suggested? What have I suggested to you, buddy? Story, theory inside of the uh, Greek. Uh, buddy, what have I suggested to you? It's not a snake; it's a worm because a worm has five parts. Worms can be split; they can be chopped into in, into smaller pieces and can and and continue to to live and grow. Well, right. That, I so, guess that's so, so what have I what have, what have I was suggesting? The snake has been what's been because it looks bigger, et cetera, et cetera, where the reality is it comes back to a worm, which comes back to what Jonathan was talking about earlier with the mushroom and, and yourself, buddy, with the mitochondria under the soil. Same thing. Well, yeah, <laughs> so it may not be a snake as we books. see a snake. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah. If you read the, the, Dune, it, <clears throat> the Dune series books uh, by Frank Herb Hubert, that's, you know, the main proponent in that series even though it's fiction is the worm is what's generating and creating all life and their ability to fold space and their ability to travel throughout the galactus was all based upon the fluid provided by a worm well that's why they call it wormholes instead of uh, snake holes right and yeah, the doherty yeah. set the doherty set is uh is literally i study holes how they open and close and what lives within them the mathematics of that is called cobordism and homotopy type theory. Um, and when you start studying that, you realize that it leads directly into integrated information theory. And everything is integrated information. The Bible is integrated information. It was written by 40 different people, and it makes sense across the broad right. spectrum. And all of it self, it's self-referential. Uh, um, the Doherty set is self-referential. The, the Bible is self-referential. And if you don't properly divide the word and understand what the word is saying then you can't understand all the different parables and how they go together and they all go together naturally accidentally because of synchronicity and uh and freud said that the purpose of uh or, or the highest uh state of being is when everything comes together in synchronicity that's when the doherty set came to me i had a whole entire three days of the seven days of the doherty set coming to me was an entire deja vu from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. I knew exactly what was going to happen. It was a deja vu. Three days of deja vu. Um, stuff, man. Yeah, so I mean, Freud said this, uh, 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 or Nietzsche. Nietzsche said this himself. And I'm like, I'm like, holy crap, I heard that today from actually Robert Edward Grant or the other guy he was talking with. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that that, that is being programmed in our, a... this is the kind of stuff that that is being programmed in our phones to help us think that there's synchronicity which is programmed synchronicity which if you see something that's that if you'll scroll through your facebook and you see something that's one shape you scroll to the next uh the next feed and you see something that's the same shape too they're trying to get you to uh um uh they know the shapes that you like they're trying to give you the shapes that you like and they'll be one after another after another and uh, that's programmed, pro programmed serendipity. Like, oh, that showed up on my Facebook today. And I was right, talking right. about that yesterday. And, you know, like... It's but is that artificial for the sake of being able to control that later once it's been properly, I don't say administered, but if you take something as simple I don't as know. Up again, the, you know, the Bernays tactics, you know... The, right. You know, I don't know. I is that something that's intentional? It's both. It's both because... Yeah. I like it. I like the suggestions of music and the suggestions of videos um, because it's showing me like, like, like. So that's what electricity does. It's how the feed continues and the feedback loops. Like, 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 like. That's how they get you to like it and that's how they get you to stay on the platform. Um, so it, it actually all has to do with dilating toruses. The entirety of all security. I'm gonna do another another video on donuts. Um, I'm going to get into cybersecurity and how it's all controlled with donuts and how they open and close. And it's your pupil. Yeah. yeah. How you get excited, how you get. One... Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, Wes, one thing we didn't get into much, and I started trying to, was going to go down that route earlier. We were talking about the hands, the feet, the heart, the mind, but we never really got into the eyeball. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. to divulge to get into that one. <laughs> well, that's but, uh, connected directly to the hands. My, my first, uh, experience with dactyl adornment was my heart chakra 
when we were putting my dog down on her last walk. Uh, my mom and I went out into the field. Uh, we saw the sunset. We had the dog pick the spot that it was going to be buried. Uh, the dog all of a sudden started doing better, you know, because how they do on their last day, whatever. We thought the dog was uh, feeling better, but um, we picked the spot, smoked a doobie with my mom, and all of a sudden I felt my heart chakra for the first time, and and my hands glue. My hands started to glow, like not glow, but I felt them. I felt healing hands yeah, for the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. How old? So then you? I went. Um, this was uh, this was 2005. 2000, okay, okay. yeah. Um, so, I don't know, 20 yeah, something. I, I got four dogs, bro. I don't know if I can handle having conversations about that. That's, that's harsh. I mean, I got yeah. kids too, but you know, it's different. I don't know how to that's, explain it. It's just different. Bro, <laughs> that's what really yeah. opened. When my when my heart opened, my hands opened. So I came home, um, and. And I and I I was like, what's going on with my body? I'm like, mom, something's going on. And I put my hands on the dog, like, and and expanded my heart. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? Maybe this is healing the dog. Maybe this is healing hands. So I went into the bathroom and I'm like, I'm gonna look at my face and see if anything changes. Sure enough, my pupils dilated when I expand my heart, and I can expand my heart on command and dilate my pupils whenever I want. And that goes hand in hand with your hands, your pupils, and your heart. Damn, How do you like that? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, but so is the eyes the – sorry for jumping over anybody here, but so would that be a result or incongruence with? You know, your eyes dilating. Is that the result of the energy being generated, or is it something that is happening as part of the process itself? It's, I know actually, it is, a it's actually a muscle in the heart. There's a name for the muscle. I forgot the name for the muscle, but, mm -hmm. um, and actually, um, I, at the time there was no Google for, for me right. to try to figure it out. You know, right. I mean, around 2005, whatever limited amount of information. Um, I didn't know, but other people can do this. Um, other people can expand their pupils and contract their pupils on command and contracting your pupils has, is directly proportional to fear and hate. Mm -hmm. Um, and expanding them is directly proportional to love, gratitude, and you know acceptance. Yada yada yada. Okay, so whatever. it's the accepting of more of the ether, ether recognizable, ether recognizable, frozen, you know, toritic fields of everything around us. It wants to accept more of that naturally, versus when you have the other stuff that's negative and crap that you don't want. Your body has a physical reaction through the heart of closing that stuff down so that you don't receive h higher amounts of it. It's a defense mechanism. Yeah. Maybe. I'm yeah. just, I'm hypothesizing here in the, for well, the sake of I, the conversation. Back to the chakras, I would say it's directly associated and related to uh, my chakras uh -huh. um, because at, we're, we're harboring light. If we're trying to if we're trying to heal others as a healer, if that's like part of the highest form of being a human is being a healer, um, you, you want to be able to hold light within yourself um, so that you can emit the most amount of uh, bio photons. Mm. Uh, the bio photons glowing so, so our body needs to be at approximately a million volts per meter. Um, uh, I believe that that number is correct that I that I wrote down, and that's a lot. So you have right. to you have to uh, our body requires a certain charge, and uh, through working with this velvet wand that I just bought and electrically electric. Uh, bioelectric therapy and plasma therapy. Um, I've been understanding a lot more about this and being in tune with 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 everything. Um, it, it is is extremely important. That, that that's just part of it. Uh, to, Dang, you know yeah. what though, man? Just thinking about that, then you have the issue of each individual's height weight, 
all of those things being a contributing factor to the amount of charge that they have within their body, all of those things are contributing factors. They just are. Mm -hmm. Whether and how close they are to that pi phi relationship stacking physically well you know because there's yeah. you know possibility your arms are longer than they should be you know well that's because my mom ate too much of this whenever while she's pregnant with me so you're now your arms are longer than they should be so now you're not in that relationship bubble of phi 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 stacking whatever which is why you're not going to get treated the same um and, and, uh, eh, and love beautiful this, people good stuff yeah, beautiful people uh, get treated differently, and they uh, they are generally more successful, and they are given things uh, for, for not generally more successful, but they're given things. I know, for what, you, free. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, they're just yeah. naturally. Is that out. why? I know what you mean. Yeah. Is that why that buddy we've sort of evolved along some of those lines? Because again, I don't know if Nick's still listening, but if you see pictures of Queen Elizabeth from when she was young right through. you, Everyone I know, you know, they're showing all them, they're going, gee, wasn't she, be wasn't she beautiful? Like, she was proportionately, what you could say, a beautiful woman. You know? Um, so that could be why those people become in those well, that positions. That's funny that you that's funny that you say that because I was just talking with uh, one of my girlfriends the other day and she said that the queen is absolutely ugly. I was telling her like you know you should drink a cup of uh, champagne before bed every night because that's what the queen did you know like in a pr promotes longevity <laughs> blah blah blah. She has a certain diet right. I'm like well if the queen has a diet it, it might make sense to diet like the queen and she's like I don't want to look like the queen when I'm older. Ew. And she I'm like, she, yeah, she looks when she's she still she looks there. very good for, for, for a lady in her 90s. That's, see, but that's your perception. For, she for aged her. well. For my lady friend, she said that she, she thought she was nasty. And I'm like, well, white people don't age as good as other people. You know, I'm like, that's, she just, yeah. that's how she aged. My grandma just, looked, oh. my grandma looked similar to the queen when she died. My grandma's German. The queen was German. Yeah. You know, that's like, wrong. the German bloodlines. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm getting at is, yeah, she was a very stoic woman. She was a very strong woman. Um, let's not forget all of that, right? <clears throat> but that that presence that she presented and that glow that her body could present when she was in the public, especially right up until she was ninety, anyway, was you know. It, it it wasn't. She did have an aura about her. Right. You know, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, I think there's. And, and there's, as, I, as I said to my missus, I said there's a big issue coming, and the issue is the next three in line are all males. Well, and if I, you have a look I, at, at the English history, and we'll have to ask Nick one day when he's here, because he's good on that. I mean, you've uh, had times in England where England's done very very well when they've had queens in in the uh, position. Of power, the men have often been so screwed up. Well, you look uh, at the yeah. um, Hatsburgs when the Hatsburgs were failing, when the women started getting the head of state positions, yeah, they the started turning was good, things yeah. around again. Here you go, Nick. I'll let you have a talk. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all right. I mean, it's a possibility. I don't think there've been that many queens, but uh, you know, she's certainly uh, done a constitutional job. And, uh, and that's all it is. I mean, yep. uh, people make personal attacks on her, but I think that's uh, not only unfair, I think it's it's in bad taste because she's a 96-year-old uh, ninety-six year old woman who's just died. Um, well, you guys, you guys the have... The Queen a Victoria. Just, 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 hearing great Victoria. Guys, just hearing you guys talk, you guys have a completely different perception of the Queen than I do in America. And yep. uh, you guys are both coming from uh, states and countries that are run by the queen. So this. Well, no, this... she doesn't run anything. She does, <laughs> she's never done run anything. She's simply, she's simply a, the figurehead of, of the, the, of the, the reconstitution right. of, well, our, well, of well, our government, well, our country. But, but, so but she, I she's, think... she's got a, she's got a job. Uh, yeah. Whether to, she runs to... it. 
listen, whether she runs it or not, you guys have a completely different perception than I do of the I queen. Mean, it's great. Art of great. And, yeah, also, yeah, and, most of, and, and that's probably has to do with, uh, with, um, uh, what, what, what's 70, the word? 76. No, uh, what's the word? <laughs> propaganda. You guys are propagandized right. into believing that. Whereas in America, <laughs> most of us, most of us know that she was tied with the number one pedophiles around the world. And so was her son. And so was her other son. And, um, you've got a couple of presidents that are as bad. Yeah. They yeah, basically, they, yeah. yeah. What, what, what are we at? Bloody Bill Clinton. Yeah. They you all know, like, 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 like you can't say, like, what I mean is when we go down that path, we go, yeah, but hang on, you elect somebody, what ends up happening is the person that gets elected is the person that basically has the most influence with money to control the narrative, and you ne don't necessarily get a good person in that spot within their system, as Nick said last week. If the person that's now in the position doesn't perform to the expectations, they will get rid of that family and put somebody else in the place. Yeah, I agree. I think, like Nick said, she doesn't. The one control she does, or that person does have, is they do have the have the ability to say this government is failing and sack them and call an election. The only yeah. thing I'll say is, and another thing I'll, I'll add to we, it is, you we also never, have you've that never in heard say a bad thing about anyone or inflame any situation or uh, or be racist to anyone. Uh, she's always tried to give a message of truth. So if that's so ugly, I don't know. You know, I don't know what the world is. Yeah, the only thing well, I was going to say it on to. Sorry, but buddy, go ahead. No, keep going. No, no, you haven't been able yeah. to spoke yet. Yeah, yeah, just I was going to say that Andy, to your point about her having a certain level of aura and beauty around her. My point to that is: is that because of her actual physical beauty, or is that in symmetry and all of those things we've been discussing, or is it because of the nature of her position that she held and the fact that individuals' attention and our auras and our energy and our yes. collectively is being directed yes. towards that person, and as a yes. result. We all perceive this person as having a certain level of beauty well, with which they normally would not normally have in day to day society. Well, it's because well you're position. correct. You're correct. Our energy allows that person that. to have that greater aura. No. I would argue that our energy does that. Yes. Yes. It's like everybody praying for someone. All of a sudden, that yes. person has all that energy, whether they like it or not. Hmm. Yeah, and I think that's why they pay athletes what yeah, they pay them here right. in the United States is because you have so many people focused on that game and on that person that catches that ball or runs the ball. There's the entire stadium to start with physically there, physically in the domain, physically in that presence, and then and providing all that energy. Life, yeah. But and then you able, have all of the people focusing on it. Yeah, that amplification that takes place, thats it just happens. I mean, it just is an issue of that energy creates – you know, new uncountable benefits for that mm. individual. And and and, buddy, I'll say this: whether it's a president, a prime minister, or or, or a royal type family, they're human. They have faults. Even the Pope has faults. We know that from the centuries, right? Yeah. But the, but the thing is, is the degree of faults that is the divining factor for the morals and ethics. And, and 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 I suppose that's the one big thing, isn't it? And I think Nick would agree with me. As far as it went, this person was possibly near as ethically clean in a lot of ways as anybody could be living on this earth, especially in a position I, of power. I, yeah. I think that the Queen stole children, an entire <clears throat> uh, an entire uh, class went missing when the queen went for a walk with them and the children never returned, um, over 20 kids, uh, and she was never brought to court for it. Uh, she, uh, she was never in trouble for it. And those kids just disappeared. I think that the, uh, the, the crime, uh, crime syndicates and organized crime work directly with the Clintons and directly with, uh, uh, the pedophiles and the queen and the king and uh, and the 
the pulp and they have second and third rate uh 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 relics relics are something that touched the king or the queen or the pope and people worship it yep. because it touched the king and queen now imagine what yep. happens if they touched a little child and how many people would want that little child after they touched the child so that's the kind of degree of uh horrible shit that i'm talking about so i don't i don't give any praise or any uh modicum of uh of energy towards the sources that i hear uh, a lot of ex extremely horrible things and i don't hear any people saying that they recant that they're against it or they recant it or that it wasn't true then i believe that the queen did take a hold uh 20 people i believe that maybe i think that's absolutely crazy i mean i have heard that right, story right. myself and uh yes those kids were in some kind of roman catholic camp where they could have been doing something but uh she was she i think she was about 21 years old then so after a lifetime um, loving ponies and hopping around in Berkshire on her on favourite horse, um, she all, all of a sudden she marries Pr Prince Edward and within a couple of years she's kind of some raving uh, psycho uh, paedophile killer. Uh, and then she's never, she's never, um, she's had a family since then and uh, never been known to put a foot wrong with anyone or be ungentle with anyone. Uh, and... And all right, I think Prince Edward was a nutcase. Yes, I think Prince Philip, her husband, certainly. But um, there was, I think, on that particular tour, she didn't speak to him for about three years. Uh, she made him walk behind her, and uh, that was that for the cameras. And um, so whatever went on, I, th I, th I think it, I think it's pretty harsh that after all this time, uh, these accusations these accusations are made. But but that that. Uh, you know, people people believe them as fact. Uh, I don't know. See, that's that's a great point that you brought up, and that's that that's the kind of stuff that I hear uh, in the United States. You know, I didn't hear too many bad things about the Queen. Honestly, that's one of the only bad things that I heard about her. Um, but then I hear so many horrible things about uh, everybody that they were associated with surrounding and, her. Sur surrounding her, yeah, her best number one people, Jimmy Savile, and and yeah. uh, I mean non stop. Oh, totally, it's, totally. It's, Look, it's, uh, half, it's half people, Margaret hang on, hang on. It's, it's, half Margaret it's Thatcher's people... cabinet were paedophiles. That's yeah, out, it, it, out the twenty on a, on a, the, who run the government. There yeah. were about fifteen of them who, who were late, you know convicted absolute weirdos. So I mean, so in 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 the corridors of of power. It was uh, where these people, have, that's where they've been to what we call public schools. Uh, they, they're actually bred to be a bit kind of uh, sexually aberrant and uh, to, to be ex extremely devious uh, because that's who they want in there. And the civil service is packed full of those people and so is the aristocracy. And uh, it's, it's, not, it's not something that really happens in the working classes and the middle classes in this country. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all, you know, there have been members of them from time to time who've popped up and done it, you know, but it's too late. Buddy's, They're always dead by the time you find out. I think to Buddy's point is that the fact that she was there and surrounded by those individuals and had, like you mentioned, I think, Nick, in your first comments was how she had the ability to go in and sack the whole cabinet if she needed to. Well, then why hadn't she? Because why she didn't did she? Why didn't she hold these individuals it, Jonathan, to these horrible Jonathan, atrocities they were committing? That's the point. I don't think that individuals Jonathan, can be held innocent and, yet, and held and, pure and, and, and not have done the right thing whenever it and was. And guess who was against it? Guess who was against it? Princess Diana was against it, and they killed her. Uh, well, you know, that's one way of looking at history, and it's a one way of looking at history, but, but, I mean... Well, whether she, wanted to do, that she, wanted, she wanted to do righteousness, but instead, yeah, what, happens is, hang on, what happens is is that people, whether she wanted to do righteousness or not, what happens is that, uh, uh, fuck, now I lost my thought. Uh, uh, go ahead. Can I put this to you? People in positions that say of a queen or, or a king, they attract devious people will, 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 will try and, and become close to them because then they've got an umbrella 
to do an under that's very hard for anybody to prize open. That's the biggest issue and why Seville and those people were allowed to get away with what they got away with for so long, right? And when you talk about Princess Diana, the problem became there was, as we've seen with um, William's wife, they don't understand the demands that that institution puts on them through the press and everything that goes with it. And, you know, if you go and have a look at Diane, she, she ended up, she did a magic job considering the mental problems that developed with her through that system, right? So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call her a, a, a saint or anything like that, but she did a magic job, you know, but she didn't understand that that system... Once you're in it, you you don't have a life like myself, Nick, Buddy, Jonathan. We don't have a they don't have a life like us. You know, yeah. um, they're, they're under the problems. public eye all the time. Yeah, you know, but that and if we can chop their head off, we will. But, but yeah, exactly. That's something that the sympathizers use uh, and themselves use uh, as to try to gain and adorn sympathy from us. I. Well, mm. I can't go well, anywhere. We don't need because, any sympathy. Because, I mean, nobody needs proper, any sympathy. It's simply, it's, it's just simply I, part of the, the mechanics of our, our political state in Britain. She is part a, of the mechanics of it. So whether right. you like it or not, <laughs> it's like right, saying, right. well, we're not having any prime ministers anymore. You know, yeah. well, what do it's we have instead? Well, it's I, the I rich people saying, oh, oh, no, I'm a pop star. Now I have paparazzi and I don't have any freedom and yeah. I don't have the normal life like you guys. You no, guys no, no. Uh, I wasn't meaning it like that with Diana. Right? right. It is an institution, right? And and and, as, and what I'm getting at is people come into it that haven't been in it and it absorbs them. That's what I was getting at with Diana because, yes, yeah, she was yeah. doing a lot of good. Right, and she did, and she did go too early. But we don't know everything that happened behind the scenes either. Doing, doing. Yeah, you know, I mean, so. it, whether, was she? Yeah, we don't. I, I don't know either. And that's the thing is that for me, on my personal take on it all, is again, I personally believe that that bloodline had kidnapped a long time ago the true essence of what means to be a king and queen on this planet. Yeah, and they hijacked they that bloodline, and so they and they stuck it with their own. And yeah. whoever, however, but that's not what it was intended by the gods, the source, his original plan. Yeah, they literally yeah. changed their last name to Windsor. That's all I wanted to say. Because yeah, they were German. It was a German name before that, and they didn't want to be associated with the Nazis, which they were, and which the Bushes were, and everybody was. And yeah. IBM. Carlisle Group. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so, and so my point to that all is, is that there's only so long that these institutions will last when built upon sure. anything other than truth, love, and, uh, uh, you know, light type of scenario. Yeah, I'd agree with That's that. That's right. I'd agree they, with that. They, they built it all on a premise of uh, deception based upon... Providing security. Everything. Providing security yeah. to the masses. Right, but they well, did it based on... It's an old feudal... I mean, you could build security feudal. underneath love. Why do you have to build security underneath the premise of uh, deception? And it's the same thing yeah. with our current, our founding fathers, the same in the United States, the same thing with the Freemasons, the Sacred Societies, the Knights of Malta, all of these groups that are running around, the bankers running around doing these things that they do, trying to control the ebb and tide and yeah. flow of society. They're doing so underneath the, the secrecy and uh, curtain of darkness, and that is a premise for de failure. And that's they're my point. and you know what they're recruiting the kids through TikTok through memes, white yeah. supremacists, neo Nazis. I'm telling you, dude, these memes oh, are ridiculously right. horrible, and the kids are just laughing about it, passing them around, and that's what builds neo Nazis. It's it's through it's through cartoons and through memes and memetics and repeating the behavior, yeah. and since I keep Over. seeing it on. Since I keep seeing it on TikTok or wherever, it's normal. It must be normal in society, right? It keeps it keeps the division. Even something as simple as 
like us discussing the concept of racism or uh, neo-Nazism and all of these isms and concepts of division. It's just simply that. It's a concept of division implemented for the sake of having the duality and keeping man frozen in a duality concept of right and wrong or good and bad, yin and yang, high and low, all of those different dualities. You keep them frozen back and forth, teetering and oscillating in between that and never understanding what it is we've just spent the last hour and 30 minutes talking about, almost two hours now talking about, which is this doherty set, this constant flow flow from source, all of these realities of the nature with which the world we live in, instead they're sitting there battling back and forth with these divisive concepts that have been pushed down to them through religion, uh, kings and queens of old, whatever, have been concepts that have been pushed down upon the individual in order to keep them ping pong and back and forth Mm -hmm. between these dualities, just to keep them confused in a lower state of vibration and never understanding the true nature of the reality with which we live and then empowering themselves to use that for their own personal benefit in life. Yeah, just like Oh, that was good. <laughs> One of the things I would say that you have that I, I really like in the state is a president can only do two terms. That's one of the things I like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I think you, you you may disagree may agree with me, sorry. That one of the faults that you have is that someone's on the Supreme Court until they don't want to be there or they die. That should be termed two. And the same with the Congress position. You've got some people there that have been there a hellish and long time. And you've got to say, hey, you need to move on. We need to get some... This is a thing that needs fresh fresh blood in it to keep it going and keep it vibrant. Right? And, and that's what, I, what, what I'd say, you know... You, and and we've got similar things here. We have a high court judge there. They're the same. They're ten years there until they don't want to be there or they die. And and, and that to me is, is is worse than having a having a bloody king or queen. Well, yeah, I what I say to that, what I could say to that, real quick, just real quick, is that's why they started FEMA. The organization FEMA is actually to keep the people who are in office in office and make sure that they stay in office during um, uh, emergencies and and subsequent just nepotism throughout the lineage. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, cronyism makes sense because check this out. If, if I go into office or if Trump goes into office, he doesn't want to go into an office that's all uh, uh, his people that are against him. So then he brings in his closest people, whether they're politicians or not, just as trusted advisors, friends, et cetera. Um, cronyism makes perfect sense because if I were to get into office, I would want my most trusted, loyal people, whether they're in politics or not, to be surrounding me. Yeah, Um, you don't want to have the opposite kind of energetic flow to have to butt up against every day. You're never going to get anything achieved inside of the office. You want kind of a flow being, you know, natural. Which is which is flow, which is why Trump Trump uh, put in uh, uh, a fart. What's that? Goldman Sachs. Trump just yeah. filled the whole place with Goldman Sachs, which is money and there's bad money in it. But what that's that was part of that's what he did. He flooded it with Goldman Sachs members and people. And and his you watch. Biggest, what, I think his biggest issue was that he never listened to the CIA. And that's what basically caused him the next term and all this stuff. The CIA came in. They got pissed off about it. And whatever money backers are behind the CIA. Those guys got pissed off at him. The in, in basically the intelligence agencies themselves. I, I don't want to narrow it down to just the CIA. Well, but I'd like to put, yeah. put themselves into that, some sort of power position inside of the, those secret agencies, those three-letter agencies. Yeah, uh, the, he he went against them. He went and hired, utilized was, money, his own folks, brought them in for intelligence gathering and utilizing intelligence. And as a result. They got pissed about that and said, "Well, if you're not going to listen to us, we're going to find another way to get power because we're not going to be." Oh, get ready! Yeah, Trump was in in bed. Trump was in bed with uh, Ghislaine Maxwell and and uh, and Jeffrey Epstein, and they might have put him in in house just because of that to make that all hush hush. uh, Because Trump Trump was the bloke who lagged. Trump was the bloke who lagged Jeffrey Epstein that ended him up in jail around two thousand and two. Oh. Yeah, see, Trump for me, my initiated himself. My, he's the one that went and actually testified. Yeah, I, I remember reading that story. I think that for me, Trump's my not all bad. 
my intuition no, not at all. about that man about that man in specific is that I have to kind of I, I have to ignore the the static you know what I'm saying like the noise the yep. media the news because you never can trust that I went based upon just my intuition and my intuition told me from day one that the man wanted to do at least some good he was trying to do the right thing he doesn't strike I, me as an individual that drinks alcohol he doesn't strike me as an individual that you know gets himself out of his own mind and does things stupidly. He doesn't strike me as an individual. He strikes me as a nerd. <laughs> you know, he strikes me well, as a fellow was, nerd. He really does. He was, <laughs> he was good at chaos magic, that's for sure. But real quick, um, pulling down all of the shades on Jeffrey Epstein, if you were to just ignore all the static there and try to understand what's going on, I will say what I see, which I haven't heard anybody talk about yet, is what Jeffrey Epstein said he was doing, he literally told this to numerous people what he was doing, is that he was um, doing a Genghis Khan type of uh, 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 ge genetic experiment where he wanted to impregnate the most beautiful women around the world, which is why he was working with Victoria's Secret Thank to, you. Cre to create the perfect human. This is all... This is all eugenic. back to eugenics. This is yeah, what it's yeah. all about. Nobody was talking about this. I'll talk about it because this is what words came out of Jeffrey Epstein's mouth. He told all these models that he was he was working to create a, 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 a him, which was a beautiful, tall, strong, handsome man with all these beautiful women, and everyone was going along with his plan. And I haven't heard anybody talk about it since. Well, I can I can answer a little bit to that. When that all blew up, when he fell out of bed, there's a woman that actually asked the question that you just asked. And she's now the wife of the king in England. She said at the time, where's all the babies? <laughs> and she was shut up real quick. I don't know if, if, if Nick remembers that or not. They oh, jumped God. on her really quick. She said that. Yep, she said that when it all blew up with... with um, Prince Andrew, and and it was all blown up with him and that, and she said, where's where all the like, You know, if he's been such a gigolo all his life, you thought he'd had a few kids along the way, wouldn't you? But, uh, yes, and it's all fun. eugenics, and Bill Gates and all them were involved. Don't worry yep. about that. Yes, it's, there, there is a master race uh, it, utilizing his genes. There's something, in, it, there's something in his genes that was beneficial that they saw that, w that worked with women all around the world, and Victoria's Secret uh, is um, uh, who owns Victoria's Secret? What's his name? Wes no. Wes Lexner. Wes Lexner is the one who funded Jeffrey Epstein. They went around from beauty pageant to beauty pageant around the world and got these beautiful women and courted them and and uh, created babies. Not only created babies, created an entire island that probably the island movies are based off of, where there's just yep. uh, there's just people that are there waiting for organ transplants um, and, and they're going to get elected to go on the island. Ooh, I get to go on the island next. And it's really just death and they get their organs harvested. Could be that, could, might not be. It might be a, hu uh, a master human race that they're trying to build through eugenics. But think, think about this. Uh, the orange haired and the green eyes that came from, uh, uh, from Genghis Khan is in like six, million people in the world his blood his blood by by uh conquering it's a conquistador think about what what the goal is here the goal here is in all cults in all cult mentality is to have as many children as possible in any cult because the cult mm -hmm. leader wants to have wants to be the lion wants to kill the other men mm -hmm. and have all the babies for themselves and all the women want to have their babies with them and then offer their children the gorilla the gorilla effect, I call it, buddy, because yeah. that's what gorillas do. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what mm. separates us. It's all right if you want to be a gorilla, I guess. Stand better. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, when the gorilla, when when the new when the new top top dog takes charge, he kills all the um, last one male offspring. Yeah, yep. yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it crosses my mind that if he was setting up this ranch in Arizona and all the rest of them. Um, no, no, he was offering them a good few thousand quid to have a baby, wasn't he? Uh, so, uh, you know, it doesn't. No one's come forward and said Jeffrey Epstein is the surrogate father of my kid. He, he, his plans went backwards, didn't they? 
Well, check this out. Yeah. They could do it. They could do it legally without anybody knowing, because you don't well, get right. to know who you. That's you don't right. Get to know People who do it. Chinese men do it all the time. They buy young Pakistani yeah. brides or whatever, don't they? All the time. So I mean, there's no. Uh, uh, apart from having that sex cult going, uh, where they were manipulating these uh, women oh, with uh, branding them and things like that, uh, and and uh, well, it, it was all it was all a big power game, wasn't it? And uh, just getting secrets on people, getting secrets on people in high places, so then you've got influence. Right. And I, I think it was just think. a matter of building loads of that up. Yeah. And, well, uh, it's, it's, it's eugenics, which has become transhumanism. And and if you listen to uh, Elon Musk's girlfriend talk on Lex Friedman, no. which his ex-girlfriend is uh, is Grimes, she'll tell you she's already uh, transcended and she's uh, she's a cyber baby. I forget the word she calls it. And and she says anybody who's born after a certain date already has has grown into becoming um, a totally different being. What is and is this with the vaccines or what? RMNA and yeah, no uh, it's fine. Look, computer, it's fine. Just, just like just by just computer, by she's, thinking, yeah. she's saying she's saying you just know, and it's fine. Kids were kids were raised with computers. They were raised different. They're cyber babies. They're actually like digi babies, digi kids, and yeah. there are they're different DNA than us. Uh, and that's what she's trying to say. Not to see that. I, or, the effect, the effect of the theory. there's a, there's a lot of effect of that going in. Like we would have been talking about a minute ago, the eye and the retina and all of the stimulant that comes mm -hmm. through there, and we're absorbing that. So I could see that through time, just as much as Buddy was able to change his hands, that those signals are going to change aspects of your DNA. And it wasn't me that was changing the hands. It was me going through experiences and really having like uh, uh, faith. Faith that the experiences that I was going through and God was bringing me through uh, were were going to be elevating your uh, vibration exactly, and not not being afraid of what God is preparing me for. Right. You know, God is always preparing us for something, and some of us are just afraid of it, and we know what's going to happen, but we just got to face our destiny. One of the things that, like I was going to mention a minute ago, when you guys were talking about all these cults and the Epstein and the eugenics and all these things, again. It, as much as we, as much as I sometimes seem powerless against being able to battle those type individuals and fight that kind of tidal wave that seems to be inevitably coming, at the end of the day, I think that just like with the kings and queens, just like with the false premises of the secret societies, the baseline the intent is control and they're and, and negative it's a baseline intent of negativity and so if we as a group of, and as a race do not stop what is obviously inevitably trying to be forced upon us if we don't find a way to stop this then it will lead in my mind to the complete and total destruction and downfall of humanity and we will have another reset and we will have to start back over from square one because you cannot base your society on a premise and a baseline of negative intent and lies and deception all for the sake of control. You cannot do it and well, expect positive shit in shit out. You cannot expect yeah. a positive outcome. Well, that, unfortunately a lot of positive outcome has come out of NASA and JP, uh, uh, JP and lab about the fall period. They will fall period. NASA will be disbanded. That's why Space Force was set up, even though Space Force is a ballistic group as well. But it's it's the same thing. NASA will be, it will fall. The ultimate premise of NASA was to do something. And if they're not careful, they're not careful, they're going to lead society into an all-out uprising against every, uprising against all and everyone. Sci anybody wearing a white coat to anybody sitting in a position of leadership, if they're not careful, that's where this will go to. Well, you want me to you want me to tell you what happened uh, uh, before the Holocaust? Uh, guess who was leading it? The white coats. It was the scientists. Guess who led? Guess who led? Ger germ yeah. games. Germ games. Guess who led germ games? The scientists. Oh, the white coats. Uh, uh, we're not afraid of white coats. We're never going to be afraid of white coats. There, we're, it's what we've been indoctrinated to believe is the right way. And this is why yeah, I can see so many. To that. Look what I have COVID's so many leftist, yeah, leftist friends that that still agree uh, 
uh, with the white coat. And, and, you know, it's just like, it really unfortunately sucks that if someone doesn't have a white coat, uh, what I think is that COVID has done for at least the West. I don't know about you guys there, Andy and Nick, but at least for in the West, it, it has shown the kink in the armor. Exactly what you're saying, buddy. There is a chink in that armor. And that, that chink in that armor is that the white coats are compartmentalized. They have been they have been uh, influenced by money and as a mm-hmm. result cannot be trusted. <laughs> like yeah, I saw this you know thing, I said, Yeah, hey, just think about this. Just right now, your doctor, your future doctor's cheating on his uh, whatever exam online, you know. It's like he's, he's cheating on his <laughs> online exam, you know. It's like these guys you you cannot trust any longer. So I think that that trust it, though it right now is a small pebble at the top of a mountain, but it is rolling down that hill, and it will be, create a large, big ass boulder by and an avalanche by the time it reaches bottom. That's I my think that's what I feel. That's fine for you to feel that, but Fauci has not left office. Uh, he hasn't been uh, in trouble for anything. He's led all the way through AIDS. He's 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 led us all the way through. Uh, um, uh, all of these horrible autoimmune diseases that actually start with ticks. They're not telling us that it starts with ticks, but once you get tick, once you get a tick and or Lyme disease, you get Lyme autoimmune disease. disease. Autoimmune diseases are uh, uh, what happens after that. And those are designed diseases that came out of Lyme, New York, Lyme mm-hmm. Island, Lyme Island from the Lyme disease. I think it's called Lyme Island, whatever, something like that. Yeah, I know what you're talking and, about the. I, I've and, read that study. Or the, and they told us they they the CIA tells us that they that they took ticks in planes and poured it over the United States and other places for for bio warfare in the United States and other places. And it's like nobody's held accountable. It, we can't do anything. They tell us that they do it twenty years after they do it, and nobody's allowed to be held accountable because it's after the. The um, statute of limitations. Yeah, statute of limitations. That's fine. It ain't. There is no statute of limitations when it comes to God and the universe. So. No. Well, the thing that um, the thing that COVID proved was how easy it is to control ninety eight percent of the population. Yeah. Yep. That's what it proved. How you can lock down whole countries and send huge amounts of people bankrupt and no one Absolute seems to really savory. worry about it. Absolute, right? create absolute hysteria in no time. And all you got to do is yep. put it on TV. And all those yep. who watch TV the next day are absolutely yep. in fear for their lives. Yeah, I agree. Yep. And, they need, and they well need to be as well. And, yeah, you know, I it have... came down to, to, buddy, you couldn't trust your neighbour because... In Australia, when they had their lockdowns, you weren't allowed to have visitors at your house. And if you had something and you had visitors at your house, your neighbours would ring the police. You know why? No they difference know to what happened. No they difference know to what happened in Germany. Yep, they know that we hate our neighbours and our neighbours hate us. And because we're all just trying to keep up with our neighbours. If it wasn't such a material space. Uh, uh, civilization, then then instead of looking at your neighbor with uh, with with envy and oh I got to keep up with him he's got a better boat than me now I got to get a better boat if it wasn't envy and it was actually uh, what I guess the United States was founded on which is uh, family and family and neighbors and community. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but a lot of people are saying that all the founders believed in slavery, so they're all horrible now. So it's like F Jeffrey, Tom, F Thomas Jefferson, F this guy, F, who, F F them all, because the beliefs at the time was a detriment, and that's why we we just destroyed uh, uh, monuments constantly because the last people had a couple things wrong. And we don't like that they had it wrong, and we want to destroy it and obliterate it from existence. I don't want to destroy every studies. little bit of history because uh, they all, most of them, had slaves at one point. But it's natural. Everyone natural. in the world 
So, yeah, so these people, these people are, are taking a very, very simplistic stance against uh, best destroy the oldest thing because they're the most likely to have slaves. You know, and, and this is this is this is the absolute mentality of not thinking and 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 making a taking a stance and a protest without even thinking about the situa the, the situation. You know, mm. uh, never mind putting it in a context of of a world context and where they might where them and their families might have played out in the old scenario. You know, is there any proof that they they were slaves or were they slave owners? Who you know? Who knows? Yeah. I anybody think, honestly, an, anybody that's being propped up is 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 the uh is is most likely the worst person ever. Michael Jackson was propped up and look at what he was doing. Um uh what what's uh, um Jimmy Savile was propped up, look at what he was doing. Jeffrey Epstein was propped up, look at what he was doing. Um uh, as far as public limelight, look at uh, Kevin Spacey, what was Kevin Spacey doing and what did Kevin Spacey do and how did all of his accusers die? Um, Kevin Spacey was, uh, was knighted. He was knighted by the queen. Um, mm -hmm. he, look at these people, look at who they prop up and look at who's knighted and, and look at Tom Hanks. Uh, who does Tom Hanks work directly with in all of his films, the government to try to make the government look better uh, they they use propaganda and they use homely looking humble people that we love. Uh, where whereas um, Tom Hanks has all sorts of weird mysterious stuff uh, surrounding him and the things that he's involved in, and he's always posting pictures when he finds one shoe on the side of the road. Come on, man. Uh, the dude's first uh, first introduction to the world was the Bosom Buddies, where he dressed up as a woman. And went to work all day. It was a sitcom. I mean, uh, the guy was a degenerate from day one. And oh, uh, yeah, I remember that. Attention to it, you know. So I think if we look at this whole entire thing as a collective viewpoint, we see that ultimately, and this is my feeling, I think that humans come into this world truly, initially, for the most part, not always, but for the most part, and, and I'm going on a generalization here, but for the most part, humans come into this world wanting and feeling and with a desire to do good. Yeah. And as a counter to that, this Illuminati, secret society, whatever they all are, with the concept of having to maintain a divisiveness, they have to maintain at the same time a, a sense, uh, you know, like that, that, that duality, even inside of the individuals they allow to get all of this attention. And the, uh, whatever is it, the Kazakh, uh, not the Kazakhs, the, the guys that run Hollywood, the Jewish uh, sect that runs Hollywood. They understand this concept because they've had access to people like John D. They've had access to people that have interpreted the angelic languages. They've had access to the people that have interpreted the Hebrew, Aramaic, and all of these different Bibles. They've had access to the esoteric knowledge for a much longer time than any of us on this call have. And as a result, built Hollywood based upon the use of that esoteric knowledge in a very symbolistic mm. fashion. Very good at point in case would be Will Smith sitting in his chair flipping upside down, turning like the hanged man in the tarot card readings. He's sitting just like the hanged man sits. He flips and turns upside down as he sings about going from West Philadelphia, born and raised, to uh, Los going to the Beverly Hills in L.A. So basically the capital of the United States being changed from the United States and Philadelphia out to Los Angeles, basically telling us that the Jews that run the entire situation there in Hollywood went from Philadelphia out to L.A., once they got there, they settled their throne. And that throne is the use of media and propaganda and symbolized, symbolization or symbols inside of all of the movies and anything that comes out of that area, for, as far as mass media is concerned, comes from Hollywood in the term utilizing esoteric knowledge to guide and direct each individual and one of us sitting here on this call now having these discussions yep. has been guided by the forces that yep. have been per perpetuated by their freaking uh, mass media propaganda type concepts, whether it be through the use of color frequencies, which is the main use they use what today, whether you go from you know, purple to green to blue, whatever colors they're using as their primary, like the red panda, or I don't know, you can watch, pull up a Disney thing and just run through the list and you can see how their color schemes change through time. 
then you go to that and you realize that through those frequencies plus the messaging behind those frequencies, but they have a good representative, a good face on top of all that to keep that deception rolling smoothly, such as Tom Hanks and his voice with Woody, you know, but it's so many nasty jokes inside of the Toy Story series is, that are not appropriate for children, but yet there's Tom Hanks's, you know, jovial, kind voice, and we don't even think twice about it. And then you go through that and look at these things and you realize, man, collect it, put it all together, and what do you get? Nothing but a lower level of vibration perpetuated upon man to keep us from having discussions like what we're having right here, period. That's what I think. I, see, I don't think there's so much nefariousness to it. I think it's all in the open. Um, I, so well, that's, I think, I think that's where we, where we differ. If someone has, that's why it's successful. If someone has, that's what, if someone has the perception, that's why they're successful, standard, buddy. yeah, I know, it's, I know it's successful and it's all out in the open. It has to be that way. Uh, it has to be that way in order for the, the, uh, mass hysteria, mass, uh, 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 uh induction, uh, of the concepts. It has to be that way, but see, we were, we I don't think that, well, I see, buddy. I know, I know. And it's all violent. And I was brought up on Walt Disney too. We were all brought up mm. on Walt Disney. Um, yeah. Sure. There's a lot of hidden stuff. Sure. There's a lot of hidden stuff. Sure. They're still hiding stuff. Um, but there, there, and there's so much more information. Um, and my where's Buddy gone? I think his phone went flat. Huh? You back, Buddy? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm back. Um, oh. uh, man, but I think I might have lost. I think I might have lost my point. Dang it. Your point was was about how they've got away with what they've got away with, and. You're saying that they've done, they do it in the open and nobody picks it up. They camouflage it beautifully. All right. You're so when we get back to our original here. call. Yeah. So All when right. we get back to our, the original call was back on about consciousness and subconsciousness, wasn't it, buddy? Yeah. Consciousness, so, subconsciousness, uh, and, how you, uh, and how you could draw that into a doubt, he said. Yeah. So, so we like I agree that all the information is available to us, all the information is out there for an individual if they were to go seek it. But I also think that we could just, as a collective and as a society, do much better in providing the information directly. There does not have to be all of this subversion. There does not have to be all these hidden meanings behind stuff. Just say what we gotta say, say what's right and what's not right. It doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to hide behind all these things in order to keep and maintain a certain level of control. We've been lied to about a lot of our history. We've been lied to about a lot of our current situations, whatever the Epstein situation was, whatever's the truth about Trump, this clown that's in the White House right now, whoever he is, I don't know, but whoever that person is playing this person they call Joe Biden, whoever that is doing these things, these are all subversion tactics and it does not need to happen because all that does is keep us all maintained at a lower vibrational level and lacking the ability to even desire to go search out truths like what you're talking about, buddy. Nobody has that desire because yeah. they're constantly at a lower state of vibration just to do the nine to five, pay their bills and do keep it simple. And it's confusing. It's too hard to get to the bottom of it. So why try? Mm. Exactly. And yeah. that leads to despair and all of those other kind of feelings and emotions that are not in line with source. Yeah. So to yeah, say all like, that is just, you know, I don't know. Well, and then is that why we now have a mental health epidemic in the Western world? That and I think uh, the heavy metals in our food and our diets just crap, whether it be the dyes and the different types of crap that they put in our foods, the sweeteners and artificial mm -hmm. bullshit that they put in our foods. That that leads to mental disorders and breakdown, especially Alzheimer's and things of older age. As you get into older age, the heavy metals inside of your head and mind that have been flown, you know, brought there by the, uh, you know, just your 
whatever mm-hmm. process, you know, you, you, right. it, it causes that. Problem. Everything it's in everything. It's in Monsanto owns the food production. So r- meat's going to be really rare, super rare to get you like your meat medium or rare. Well, too bad. It's going to be rare for everyone. Well, you got to remember, we still all live with the effects of ethylene or lead in fuel. That actually is measurable that it dumbed us down. Well, that's the guy who killed the most people in the world. Oh, yeah, him. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes, he invented that, and there was something else, too, he was involved in that was equally as bad. <laughs> But what I'm saying is the effects from that that are in the environment now are going to be going on for a long time to come because it's a long time before they get get out of the environment. So so. humanity's naturally been dumbed down through that. And you look at the advertising campaign they used to get away with it was amazing too. Well, I mean, there's I remember watching a commercial... A black and white commercial for DDT bug spray, yeah. and they they put a bunch of children and a family at a picnic table and just completely sprayed them, covered them head to toe with DDT. And now we know later, all these years later, and then they just went on and ate their little sandwiches, and it was a great commercial. You know, it was a great advertisement. See, look how harmless DDT is. Everybody should have it. And now we learn all these years, you know, later that. <laughs> They're basically poisoning these poor children and this lady sitting there at the picnic table, not mentioning they went on to mass produce it. Well, you know, they're doing the same. They're doing the same exact thing with uh, with vapes right now in the United States. Yeah. Vapes vapes are horrible. And guess what? The The tobacco tobacco industry has never faced one repercussion that I know of. of Money, a little bit of money here and there, yeah, from their product. So. So what's happening next is is kids are going to start dropping dead from sudden adult syndrome, um, sudden adult death, like su- sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS, sudden adult death syndrome, uh, like J.P. Sears is showing. And you got to be a comedian nowadays to get this information across. Otherwise, like it, like always, just like always, you have to be a good comedian nowadays to get this information across. Otherwise, they won't allow you to say it. So, um, because at any moment they could just make you, they could dismiss you as a comedian. But if you have actual credibility within the, any type of intellectual community, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, they, they can't they harder, have to harder to discredit you. Yeah, you know, there's a fight. there's a thing on Netflix right now. It's on uh, the anthrax issues they had when they had uh, people mailing anthrax inside of an envelope, and they never really found ah. out who was doing that. Right. So I watched I watched this thing because I knew personally the Unabomber. You know, yeah, basically. But I watched, uh, I, I was friends with a guy. He worked with me over in the Middle East. Uh, he was the guy that was running the mailroom there in Baltimore. And then he went up to D.C. Uh, for chem bio detection when this all went down. So I had a firsthand story before watching this crap that they put on Netflix. And I'm sitting there watching this thing on Netflix, and they went through two people. The first guy was an ex-Marine that lived by himself. He was divorced from his family, lived in his own house and everything, but he had a previous history with the military. He went defense contractor, and he was just living a normal life inside of his house. But they went after him in the media. They bombarded him, and it was obvious what it was. They obviously set this poor guy up to fail. They wanted him to commit suicide. They put so much pressure on him with the media, with the law enforcement. They staked his house out 24-7 for five years this man lived up underneath constant scrutiny and couldn't do anything but he never committed committed suicide so they moved <coughs> on and they went to this other guy they went back to the laboratory to the some guy that they interviewed at the first point of the process and they put the pressure on him they put this media the scrutiny and within no joke within a very short time that individual committed suicide and now to this day they say that's who the guy was that mailed the letters right well it's called a useful idiot uh, yes. Or, or whether they're a useful idiot or not, these people that take these uh, these quizzes for the mili- military to get in your acceptance, mm-hmm. they're they're asked all these questions: Are you willing to commit suicide? Are you willing to do this for the government? Are you willing to do this? Then they categorize them and they bring them into special operations or 
they actually don't tell them that they're in the CIA at all, and they funnel them acid from another person, and then they form things like the Grateful Dead explosion, giving acid to all sorts of different people, and all sorts of different people ending up dead associated with the Grateful Dead. Yeah, I study all sorts of weird different um, uh, 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 murders and all sorts of stuff. I watch murder podcasts like a woman watches murder podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and and because and I say that because women watch it because they're more vulnerable and no one even knows this. That's why women are addicted to watching um, crime podcasts because they're more susceptible to getting something happen to them. That's why I started watching it because a few things did happen to me. And I'm like, well, I better know the ins and outs of what's going on here. So uh, you're always told as a woman, don't go to the bathroom by yourself. Don't go outside by yourself. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't. Men don't have it that way. Women naturally have that uh, that <coughs> being, that's, that's put in them because it's a real fear. It's in reality. Um, it's not a fear that's based out of reality. It's a fear that's based in reality. So, um, anyway, gents, I'm going to love you and leave you. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I've got Thanks for the conversation. I know. Oh, oh, no. Sean, sorry we didn't even get to say hello. Hey, what's up, guys? I just, <laughs> oh, I just woke up. <laughs> just got up. <laughs> uh, oh, we've been going there for um, oh, a good while. Uh, where is it? It's on here, son. We've been going about three and a half hours, <laughs> four hours. Thank yeah, you. Nice started off with a good topic, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good so, topic, guys. all right, we'll catch you again. Yeah, 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 we'll do it again. See you later. Yeah, so all right. Good. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye. All right, everyone. We'll see you all later. That was a good, a good conversation. See you guys. Even though I caught the tail end of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you, Sean. See you, man. Geometric View is a Love is Watching product, a Love is Watching being. Thank you for doing that. Keep your eyeballs out. Pay attention. There's a lot going down this year. Be vigilant. Be mindful. Be insightful. Be loving. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being kind. Share the love. Spread the love. Become the love. Amen.
turn. His mouth seems like a gap. Life for the cause. Love, life, living to the fullest.